Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's Saturday. Hey, Nikki. No rain there? You're hanging out laundry? Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, the weather here is so awesome. I'm actually wearing jeans today. I could wear shorts, but you know, I um, I was looking forward to wearing jeans. You know, it's kind of nice for a change. <laughs> what else are you guys doing today? Hi, Eliza. Oh, yeah, right. I know. Timing is so hard. I really wish I could come up with a time for all the folks, like in Australia. Um, and just for the Europeans that have to like stay up past their bedtime. <laughs> I don't think I would do that. So I, I, kudos to them, man. I don't know what, what's the perfect time, right? All day Saturday, all day Sunday. <laughs> my weekend's going good. I mean, you know, my weekend kind of starts tomorrow because I work right now. I'm trying to only work Tuesday through Saturday. That's awesome, you guys. Hi, Candace. Welcome. Yeah, it's starting to seem like fall. It's nice. I I will admit though, I really look forward to summer when it's spring. I just like wearing dresses though. But you know, I'm kind of looking forward to like fall sewing too, like those kinds of projects, which I'm ready to do, but at the same time it feels really weird. So, so today's gonna be pretty chill. I don't really know. I'm just gonna work on this pin cushion. Erin! A real life, real life, wait, I want to say, uh, in real life friend. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. How's your trip going? You're kind of still just kind of like moseying, right? You're going to the Emmys tomorrow, aren't you? That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, right, Eliza? We're cramps our style. Absolutely. <laughs> So do kids. <laughs> so um, today I, you know, planned on sewing part two of the Kielo wrap dress, but that went quick. You guys were right. You're like, yeah, there's not going to be a part two. And you were right. So, um, oh, you're sitting in Hermosa Beach. That's where I took my SAT, Erin. Like, I was like, I have to, I can't take it up here. I have to, like, go to the beach and do it. It actually wasn't my attitude, but I just thought it would be really fun. So I drove at like 3 or 4 in the morning to take the SAT in Hermosa <laughs> Beach. <laughs> yeah, you want to make some fall tops and hoodies. I have a few of those lined up, Megan. But like I said, I'm, I'm, I want to like put my serger through the ringer before I commit to those quite yet. I think it just needs a little bit of adjusting on my part, you know. So um, you guys have expressed a little interest in this really old design of mine, this little cherry pie pin cushion. It's kind of one of the first things I ever started selling and making long time ago. Hi, Kevin. How's it going? <laughs> and, um, um, I, I mean, I don't know how, what it'll, where we'll go with this, but I did pull out my old pattern and this was a cupcake. This was the very first cupcake I ever made. It's super faded, not in colors I would normally go for. It's like I said, it's really faded. You might even recognize some of these fabrics and be like, oh yeah, those don't look right. And I had this cool, um, I had this cool pom-pom thing. So my old shop used to be three walls of windows. My old shop, like from a while ago before I lived here in Chico. And um, it was hard not to get things to fade. So I always had to protect everything. But this, you know, always sat out. I didn't really use it much, but it, it, it's kind of light. I have some gravel that I would like go across the street to the playground and scoop it up in the parking lot and wait my little pink cushion. This one's kind of light. You guys know that. It's always flying off my table. It's one so, this one's sewn kind of wonky. I don't know if I would, I probably would have, ouch, 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 ouch. See, this is the thing. They can get buried in there. It's kind of big. Maybe that's the thing to do, make it a little smaller. But um, it was kind of a pain to sew. I had to hand sew this part shut, which you all know how I feel about hand sewing. Um, and uh, my favorite one got stolen from my studio. 
it was in this it was like a purple crust and it had blueberry filling and it was a smaller blueberry print than this but it looked it was the photographic fabric you know so it looks pretty realistic and then it had a little ruffle in like this buttery yellow with these little birds on it it was really cute um and it was used in everything and it was in one of my open studios someone walked out with it <laughs> I haven't really ever had much stolen that I'm aware of. Like, even at shows, I know one thing one time, and it was a tiny little needle keeper. And, um, oh, did the, oh, no, it didn't freeze. Never mind. Um, and, um, the, like, I, w I don't, I'm not one of those people that would take inventory. I take inventory before a show, and I take inventory after show. I do not compare them to my sales. A, because I actually don't want to know if something was stolen. B, I actually don't think people steal anything. Thing, I just don't. And, and the pincushion, I have no idea why. That was pretty bold. Like, that was at my house. Because the shop was behind my house. It was like a 400 square foot shop. Three window, three walls of windows. It was really cool. I loved it. It'd be perfect right now for me. <laughs> I would love having that. <laughs> I had like... 80 chickens out there in the apple orchard. It was so idyllic. It was almost embarrassing how like, I felt like I was living this like fairy princess artist lifestyle, you know, when I was really just working my butt off in there. One time I was, when we first moved into that place, it had been vacant for a couple of years. Yeah, hi, Laura Jean. Yeah, Laura Jean got to see that space. So one time I was there, I was still setting up my shop. My husband was at work, my daughter was at school. And, um, uh, I remember because I was listening to a radio show, I always listened to at noon, and all of a sudden, I was looking out, and I saw this fox come into our yard, and there, one of the apple trees, we hadn't like spruced up all the apple trees yet, and so they were kind of a little bit bedraggled, you know, and there was one where this branch was broken and resting on the ground, and this fox climbed up the tree, picked an apple, got down, ate it, did that like three times. And then he loped up to the yard where I was because it was like about an acre. So he was at the back and he wasn't, he wasn't far, but I, I could see him really well. But he came around, came by my shop. He didn't see me because, you know, he just didn't even know to look in there. And then came up to our back door to our house because I was like 10 feet away. And there was a wheelchair ramp back there. And then he stretched out on the wheelchair ramp and took a nap. <laughs> And then there was a stray cat that came with our house and she lived in a little bed right next to the wheelchair ramp and she was just hanging out there like this was a thing. The whole thing was crazy. And um, and he did that like, or she did that, I'm not sure if it was male or female, she did that for a couple of weeks off and on. And But foxes, I don't know if you know much about foxes, but they have these really crazy territorial schedules where they have like big territories and they switch around to them kind of like in a sequence and so when they're back in your yard it's never the same time of year it's always this different time of year because it's this odd number of days it's really weird yeah we had deer there and everything so hi ray <laughs> yeah so um that was a really cool space but it, i would have open studios there every year and yeah that's when i lost that little pincushion it's actually my my profile picture on Etsy from my really old Etsy site. <laughs> I kept it because I was like, this is so cute. So, anywho, um, what are you guys working on today? So, this is very atypical, you guys. I may not even upload this one. It'll automatically upload, and then maybe I'll leave it there for a couple days, and I'll probably take it down because it's not instructional unless you guys ask me a question that you have, like sewing questions. Um, hi, Claire. How's it going? So I, these are, look, I haven't even looked at this, you guys. This is like the first time I've opened this bag of stuff. I have never even looked at this since living here in Chico and I've been here seven years. So there's a few cut pieces. I do remember one time going through the bin and being like, you need to just clean out some of this stuff. Um, and this is both pin cushions. I have directions here. We'll see. So this is, there's two patterns here. This is right here. Like just seeing how many pattern pieces this takes. This is why I stopped making it. Yeah, Laura Jean, it's been seven years. Seven long years. Hi, hey, Terry. How's your, did you finish your suit coat, Terry? So this is the 
See, and this is, I actually worked on cupcakes more because look at three, three pattern pieces. You guys, the struggle. If you're manufacturing something, the fewer the pieces, the better. Goes without saying. Let's see, I have found a few cut pieces here. Not all of them. I don't have, oh yeah, I do have, um, this is the same. Oh, maybe I have opened this up because this is that fabric. I had this really great um, stash of all fruit fabrics. I had a couple candies and they would look like this. They looked kind of up close and photographic like that. And I would make them out of all kinds of stuff. Banana, cherry, apple, you name it. Hi, Veronica. How's it going? Hem and buttons left. Terry, you finished a suit coat. That's awesome. So, um, so yeah, I'm just going to work on this, you guys, and see because we don't, you know, we don't really do these just chatting streams. My favorite filling is blueberry, but I'm partial to blueberry. I never found, I know, and I really like the colors exactly right. I really like this color combo, and it was, it did end up becoming like a one people wanted, but I could never find the, the little miniature bird print. It was really cute. It was like I said, it was like a, like a orangey yellow, and it had these little tiny birds on it, kind of just per, like stacked in a row, like all lined up, and they were in varying colors of like, purples and orange so it kind of tied it all together in a weird way you know me I like contrast this one's one of the more tame ones but I just remember it being hard look at my old chicken boots label Etsy <laughs> really old <laughs> um, so as an aside if anyone wants their own labels that's the tutorial I should do for you guys because I know some of you would like to put labels like I, I mean I know I just had these 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 made which are hilarious you know because they're me I look like a clown but um you don't have to do this I should have done that myself honestly I just totally forgot about it um I get the inkjet printer sheets by uh is it June Taylor it's June Taylor Taylor made what's that name June uh, I'm getting it confused with the pattern company Hey June Handmade. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? June Taylor. So they make inkjet and laser jet fabric printing sheets. You've probably seen them at the fabric store, and um, uh, they work amazing. June Taylor. Thanks, Shanika. Wait, wait, Shanika. I have to click for the last. Yeah, Shanika. I have a. I just went to my high school reunion. That's where Aaron's from. She went to high school with me, and um. There was a gal named Sharika. That's why I was like, oh, Sharika. I'm like, no, it's not Sharika. I know that person. <laughs> yeah. You just got to put that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so they work really good. And so what I did was because I'm no graphic artist. I pretend to be one all the time. And I just, um, um, the bird, yeah, the third fabric was a bird fabric on this. Yeah. So um, I used Word. And I put in my little graphic and I used one of the, just in case Shanika, you want to make labels. I used the, um, like label layout, the Avery, like, I think it's eight, one, six, zero. So it's like the one inch by three inch long, um, address labels. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. And, um, I would put, you know, I think I put that sideways and everything. Pretty sure I did that like that. And then and then copy paste it to all of them. So you get 30 per page. And I got the fusible inkjet sheets and I would fuse them to an extremely lightweight like muslin back there. I used my, what you guys call the roll hem feature of the serger for the edges there. If you don't, they just get a little frayed so you could make your label big enough to turn under all the edges and just stitch it down and you won't have to worry about the, the marrow edge. I would rotary knife cut a bunch, have a stack of them, and then I would just run them through the serger all linked up each side and then cut them. And um, it's sad, but it was still cheap. It's still cheaper to do that. I've done the math 6,000 times because I couldn't believe it. It was cheaper to do that than, than to buy pre-made labels and I used to buy 15,000 labels at a time of the woven chicken boots labels, the ones I ended up with. So 
um, which were really nice, but still. This thing, these last a while. The print quality is really great. So if you guys ever want to do that. You did, Terry? You put a linen shirt? Wait a minute. In your printer? What are you talking about? Or you did, did, did you do a transfer? Hi, Beverly. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. We'll see. <laughs> It automatically uploads, so yeah. Like I'm not even sewing yet. Are you guys sewing? I hope you're sewing or eating popcorn or something. <laughs> so um, I'm a little nervous to sew this. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I liked sewing these, but when it wouldn't go well, like see, look at that. I don't really like that right there. This little hump. I'm picking it apart. I know, I know. It was this, it's it's the fact, like, I could make this really easy if I didn't want this edge of crust. If I just wanted it flush, that'd be no problem. It just makes it so much better that it has this little edge, though. Oh, you fused it to freezer paper and, okay, I have heard of that for, like, 20 years. What is freezer paper? And why am I the only one in the world that has no clue what freezer paper is? Is it, do you like live in the Midwest and it's a Midwest thing? Is it an East Coast thing? Like, what the heck? You can tell I'm kind of like, what is this mysterious freezer paper I've been hearing about since forever? Because I don't know. <laughs> that freezer paper. Like, I know wax paper, I know parchment paper, white paper you package meat in. That's it? Wait, it's wax paper? The butcher paper. Okay. Because I know that stuff. I mean, I've been around that a lot. And so you, I, you can iron. That's wax? <laughs> okay, so I know what it is. Why don't they, people call it butcher paper? Why do they call it a freezer paper? Because I don't freeze my meat in that. I put it in a bag, you know? So, like, literally, like, if I'm at the butcher, because I actually go to the butcher and get most of our meat a lot of times, like, the back, you know, like, in the store. <laughs> I feel really silly explaining that. But, you know, and then they roll, they pull it off the roll, right? That? <laughs> Such a noob. <laughs> the roll says freezer paper. That's why. Okay. Okay, okay. And then Terry, you ironed it on, and then you cut like you cut it, and made sure it was like the right size, and went into your. You have to do it reverse printing. That's true. Well, if it's a transfer, yes. But your printer knows to, to reverse it. Okay, thanks, you guys. Okay, okay. Hi, Deb. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's how I do it, Megan. I just put it in a plastic bag. Hmm. Okay, yeah, and so I just got vellum. So tomorrow, you guys, is that quilting class I'm going to take. And I'm actually really excited about it. I was kind of nervous because um, I'm going to learn something you probably all, most of you know. It's called foundation paper piecing. So I bought the rest of my fabrics yesterday. Um... Yeah, we never use it for its intended purpose, right, Lisa? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try that just because I need to try it now. Hello, Maribel. How's it going? <laughs> is that a shawl in your profile picture? I can't. Oh, there's a little bird. It's like this this big. And it looks like a, a blue shawl <laughs> laid out on the ground because I've seen so many knitters take pictures of shawls. I've done the same thing. That's what the picture looks like. So um, I got my, so this is what I did, you guys. I'm such a noob. I'm going to someone's house to take this class. And um, I don't even care what pattern we're doing. Like literally, like that wasn't why I'm taking it. Like it's called the tell me a story quilt. And if you look at the hashtag tell me a story quilt, you'll see the squares. The squares are cute, but I think the, like people, they really caught on because people really like the idea behind you. It's a fussy cut little motif in the middle of the block. I don't know much about quilting, you guys, so just forgive my terminology. It's a dolphin. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and it's great for outfit. Okay, you guys. So, um, 
So, um, but I watched the gal that's local, like she's the mom of one of the gals that worked the fabric store here. Um, I watched her, I followed her on Instagram one day. I was just looking at a little video she posted and I was like, I don't understand what's happening here. And I watched that video like 20 times and I was like, okay, this is that foundation paper piecing thing. I, I understand that. And I understand the, the like principle behind it, but I still, I think I'm being really too logical about it, especially when it comes to seam allowances. And it's gonna, like once I see it, I'm gonna be like, oh, okay. <laughs> but every time I'm looking at it, I'm trying to sort through what I'm seeing. So I, I decided to just take the class to find out. And I also wanted to take a class from someone and see how they teach and um, learn how to teach, you know, cause I just don't, I'm just trying to figure that out. I know you guys are always really nice and say I do an okay job, but I still, I want to, um, Oh, it's a bird from a machine embroidery. Okay, okay. It just looks like a shawl laying on the ground. Now I know it's a bird. That's cute. I can kind of see the bird now. Yeah, so so the... Um, I oh, I left the book over there, but the little block looks... It, you can see little snippets of it there. Sorry, it's a bad... Let's see if there's another picture. Well, and then that, the quilt will lay, lay out like that. Like I said, I'm not... I don't really care about that part of it. I'm just trying to figure out the foundation paper piecing so I got um I've had all these black and white it's really confusing yeah see Lisa that's what I think yeah that's what I think Lisa I just need to try it and then I'm gonna be like okay you know but um I've been collecting black and white cat fabrics for years just because it's funny because I have a black cat and a white cat and there's so many of them and I started that there's a quilt called um, modern, modern block. What is it called? <laughs> It'll come to me. Um, and it would take me 45 minutes to cut out one square and then like two minutes to sew it. And I was like, I don't really like this. And I've done a bunch of them, but, um, I didn't finish it. And that's not like me. I don't really have a whole lot of works in progress is sitting around here. So this is the backing of my quilt. So I'm sticking with, I'm going to stick with my black and white cat thing, right? So this is my black and white backing. So this is the, t on the top, this is my background. Look at this cool yarn dyed cotton I found. So that'll be the like background around all my squares. And then I bought one of the jelly roll things and I got all of these little, I love miniature prints. And they're all these florals. Look at these. These are so cool. And these will be the strips around the square. The squares, right? And then I have like a ton of cat fabrics. Yeah, yeah, so the, all my fabrics are down here. I don't know if you can see. I'll lift up my cart. Maybe that'll help, let's see. Ah, no, I'm not gonna lift up my cart. That sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. I'll pull them out in the chunk. And then I, I got black for like the tips of the corners, but. So here's some of my cat fabrics. Like I have so many black and white cat fabrics. And here's some more. They're not all black and white, but all of them have cats on them. <laughs> so, Wait, and oh, here's some of the squares I've made for this quilt that I've never finished. So I, this, I'm such a noob. I'm bringing that whole, um, I don't know how big it'll be, Eliza. I have way too much fabric. <laughs> so that modern, what is that modern quilt block thing called? Oh, here it is. It's called um, modern building block. So this is what I started with, okay? And here was the quilt originally. These are all the blocks. So each block is different and different size. So, right? And I've done some of them. So here's some of my blocks so far. And I'm not kidding. It would take me like 45 minutes to cut one out because the pattern pieces aren't included. So you have to draft the pattern pieces, fussy cut the damn thing, and then sew it together. So here's one. I mean, how did I do? These are my very first quilt blocks ever, and I made them a couple years ago. Here's another. Don't judge my sewing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, and some of them I started cheating. I was like, that's one. <laughs> Here's 
Here's another. That's two pieces. You know I love that fabric. And this is that, um, you can make fabric bread boxes by Heidi Kenny on um, Spoonflower. You can get her like panel and it's pre-printed and you can make these like bread boxes, fabric bread boxes that look like little kitties on your counter with ears and a tail. And there's some, ex I had some extra pieces so I cut the face off. Here's one. See, every square is different. So it took me a long time to cut all these out. And so, not that one. All black and white. And it was just gonna be for our bed. I don't know. I was trying to like, you know, learn what quilters do. And then there's some really big ones. Some of these, I actually bought um, tea towel in Edinburgh, <laughs> Scotland, and used it. So these are really big. I feel like I'm just showing and telling and not sewing. So this one. Oh, this is another cheater block I did because I have this fabric and it's all printed with things like this. They're all different animals. Um, oh, I, here's another cheater. That's a big time cheater. Here's a big time cheater. Okay, but then these are the, I made these really big ones. This is actual a block in the pattern. It's huge. Huge block. And then here's the, you can see the fabrics. I love this fabric. I made a dress out of a different colorway. See the little black kitties in there? And then here's my last one, and it's also huge and upside down. Huge! So, so what I'm thinking, you guys, I'm, I don't know. I, I think these, I'm going to try and sew these up into their own little thing. I'm not quilting a quilter knits, but um, I'm taking a quilting cat class tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, stop asking me what size. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you what the tell me a story is. Let's see. It's, um... So this is what I'm doing. I'm learning this one. And the finished quilt is 54 by 60. What is that? That's like queen, right? So I think what I would actually rather do is either two twins or a king because that's what I have on my bed. So I don't know. I'm just going to see how it goes. But I'm ready. Yeah, so a quilter. I got all my stuff. Oops. This is my, and this was the backing to go with all those squares I just showed you. This is my, I'm going to use it for this now. And then this is my border, not border, background for the top. And then I got a jelly roll that was, because these are the size strips that go around the square. So I'm so excited. It's kind of exciting to do something I've never done before. It's actually really exciting, not kind of. I know, <laughs> Megan, I can make probably two. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use my nifty, like, rotary, rotary mat. <laughs> I, I am full on a noob that I'm just like, what's the supply list? And I got the supplies. Like, if I were to take a garment class and there was a supply list, I'd be like, I'm bringing what I want. You know, I'd be all like. <laughs> yeah, right? A quilt dress, I'm thinking too. Yeah, Eliza, I can see that. The, it was a little overwhelming. I was at the fabric store yesterday and I was like, ooh, I'm a little overwhelmed. And I didn't, then I just wanted to buy like four jelly rolls to have like everything on hand. I'm like, no, 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 no. You are copping it out. You know, oh, a king is 107 by 107. <laughs> that sounds too big. We got, my husband is really into our bed being European style. So we each have our own covers, own bedspreads. Isn't he cute? He's like half my size. I don't know what he's worried about. But yeah, he's, he can't, he's not watching me right now. At least I know he's sleeping because he's, he's overseas. <laughs> he's in Amsterdam. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was pretty overwhelmed with the fabric store yesterday. I was like, oh, you know, um, there's too many possibilities. And then when I saw that background fabric, I was like, oh yeah, that's me. I like that. That's not the color 
way, way I was going, but yeah, it's all about the tools. Exactly. I got some funny tools. Like I got, I showed you guys these tools, right? I got this mat and then I got, oh yeah, this is what I was going to show you guys. Um, is this vellum paper I got? I printed on it and it's see-through. And then I made myself, so here's the vellum paper and I printed the pattern on it. And so that's why it's see-through. I don't really know, but then I made this, look at this. So look, I can see my fabric and fussy cut it. I made a little window. So I have put on my try hard panties. Um, and then I got this interesting ruler that was recommended. It's got this little lip. Add a quarter plus. Seems like a gadget to me. So we'll see. I don't know. I really want to finish my project. And I want to finish my cat thing. I think this is going to get me to do it. I, have, I had to finally give myself permission to not finish that modern building block quilt exactly as pictured. And that was really hard for me to do because I don't know how to pick out fabrics as a quilter and color values and all that. Cause I didn't know there's a thing about it. I, all my blocks are kind of all over the place. There's definitely like a little theme, but at the same time it was, I wanted it to be black and white and gray. And then all those colors started happening. And I was like, Oh, this isn't really what I want in my, my like primary thing in my bedroom, you know? So then I just kind of, yeah, anyway, I'm going to make this pink cushion now. You guys sew what you're gonna sew. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> yeah, I have a few of those square rulers too. And I am going to bring only the quilting rulers, not, cause this is the kind I love using, but let's be honest, the quilting rulers are safer for the rotary, you know? Oh, I need to put these back in here. I'm worried I'm gonna forget something. So I'm bringing that whole little rolly cart. I'm just gonna put it in my car and then roll it up to our house. Because I, I just want to bring everything because I don't know what I'm doing. So um, so let's just try sewing one of these. I'm going to try it in scrap fabric, though, because I really don't have much left of those things. So what are you guys going to do? So this will be the filling. The filling. I know, it's hard to... Uh, do a prototype, not in real fabric, isn't it? Just in case. Oh, but this, maybe I'll do this little edge right here for my, I don't, okay, it's gonna look awkward. I don't usually, um, what's funny, a quilter, that I'm bringing my rolly cart? Like, should I not do that? Tell me what the etiquette is, the cart. <laughs> it was either that or bring like four bins. You're working on your, oh, Kevin, are you the one making the gingham, gingham camp shirt? That'll be cool. I actually went and looked at your profile to see if I could see um, a picture of the fabric. I really want to find some Kelly green gingham, I think. I love green and green and white. You know? Oh, gosh, you guys are making me self-conscious about my cart. Should I, should I leave my cart at home? It will take up less space. I was thinking then the little car could just sit there and I'm a machine and I take up very little space. I'm trying to be low impact on the group and also not decide what not to bring, you know? No, bring it. Okay. I don't want to be that kid, that kid, you know? <laughs> I think there's only one other student. No pressure. <laughs> okay, there's my filling for my trial. Cut one and cut one in the ruffle. Oh, okay. I love how I feel like I'm, I'm doing this like pattern someone else drafted. That's how it feels, it's been so long. I have a, you have a picnic, okay, you, me to me, okay, I will. You're doing a wool burn, oh my gosh. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds um, hot. 
You know, um, yeah, didn't we think say that the Granville shirt is most like a camp shirt? Is that the one you guys were, um, which one are you doing, Kevin? Are you doing a men's camp shirt or a women's camp shirt? I should have cut two of these out. And yes, it is bugging me that the print is sideways. Trust me. But sometimes it's good to do fabric you don't like because then you'll do your best sewing. Hi, Mata. How's it going? I know it sounds kind of contrary, but it, it it makes me not focus on finishing really quick quick to see it all done. Because that's my thing. I'll do a, a prototype and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. And then I rush it. All right. And so this also says, okay, I have this. It also says to cut one and stiffener. Now look at the difference. When I first was making these, this was the stiffener I had on hand. Look at this stuff. That's a big difference. Things have changed. I feel like I've told a lot of people, oh, you can buy the stiffener I used at um, Joanne Fabrics. And you can, you can get something almost this hard. If you wanna buy any, let me know. I have two rolls still. You cutting out a few dresses, Laura Jean. Laura Jean, you almost have more dresses than me. Oh, it's a men's camp shirt. Ooh, what pattern, Kevin? Are, do you do, um, there's a guy I follow who does um, vintage. So, and the camp shirt he just made actually has a seam down the center front. It's kind of funny, it's a pullover. New look 6179. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Finish it. That's for you, Ray. <laughs> You get stuck in the figuring, you have several changes, yeah. Right? I know what you mean. Okay, so one, let's read this. I'm just gonna go by my original instructions, see what happens. I have to trust in the past, ceremony, you know? A hunter green Cali pop over. Ooh. Yeah, right, Eliza? I stitched my pleat down on, um, I think you and I have talked about this, right? <clears throat> I stitched my pleat down on the tea house dress and I really liked the way that worked. I did only did it on one. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you're making an exam, yeah. Hi Alicia, how's it going? Welcome. Today's kind of, I, I haven't seen you here before. Forgive me if you've been here before, but just so you know, this is not a usual stream. Usually like I have a project and we sew that project and it's like part one, part two. Today, this is my first time just kind of hanging out and chatting with you guys. And um, I'm trying to recreate this pin cushion that I've lost now. Oh, it's right here. This little pin cushion I used to sew a long time ago with my pattern and um, so I'm looking at past me's pattern here and going, huh, your handwriting is still terrible. <laughs> you gotta love that I put a pin there though, right? <laughs> awesome, well welcome. Ooh, you're doing your Linden Deb? Awesome, awesome. I'm thinking I need to start looking at some of the um, big five patterns branch out a little. I know some of you would like to do patterns other than indie patterns and I don't do indie patterns for any reason except that they're just kind of like in the Instagram feed and people are excited about it and I don't shop at a place that has the big five pattern companies patterns. So right Alicia it's like huh it, you know, though, I write exactly like this. Like, my handwriting hasn't changed. And I thought I'd gotten worse, honestly. So, there's that. Wait, this says ruffle. This looks more like a ruffle pattern. Why did that pattern piece say that? Cut one ruffle, two by nine. Oh, yeah, I don't know why I wrote that. Okay, so that's our first thing we're going to do. <laughs> so, 
Um, well, you know, Shanika, um, yeah, it would totally be that way. It's, I used to make these in cellies like a long time ago, uh, probably more than 10 years ago. And they were just something I did for fun and before I kind of decided exactly what direction I wanted to go with my, my product line. And I haven't sewn them for a really long time. I ended up doing knitting ac accessories for knitters and crocheters. So it would be fat quarter friendly because I think the biggest piece, like this one you might have to piece together. No, 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 that's like less than 18 inches. But I am hoping that maybe if this goes well, I could make a, a downloadable pattern for you guys for fun, you know, so. Oh, you're doing your beeswax wraps and lunch bags. That's really cool. <laughs> You know, Shanika, it's funny. I've been seeing people um, post that they have like a cart that's for crafters. It looks a lot like the IKEA Raskog cart, which I have one of those, at, but I don't use it for crafting stuff. I use it just, well, whatever. I just use it next to my chair at home and I put different things in it. And um, I've seen one recently come out that looks a lot like it that I think is being sold at one of the really big craft stores and it's specifically designed for crafters so there's hooks on it you can hook your rulers on it if you're a quilter stuff like that so hey Rebecca you'd like a pattern to slice the pie I know Pam Bush says she wants one too yeah so um yeah is it easy Mata? so I bought the um beeswax wraps made by the like original company that made them and I added zippers to mine so that I recommend I, I recommend that Mata. If you if you can, I would like make a couple of your wraps zippered bags. Oh, Alicia. That sounds awful. <laughs> it's like pop when you burn popcorn and you can't get rid of it. Dang. Well, that's good to know. I'm not very good at cooking. I don't tend things very well. All right, let's see here. So what are these? Is this a pattern piece right here? Because in the sewing instructions, these aren't included. It says to cut. This is, these look like, in the instructions, these are the pattern pieces. You know? I'm gonna try this. I think I have a feeling why I did this. In this way, you would have a seam with this it goes right here it's this piece right here I think look at how narrow that is what the heck <laughs> I don't know yeah cut oneself I have the teal one too, Megan. Oh. Okay, so let's see. We have our filling. Let's make our ruffle. Some of these. I say our like you guys are doing. You can't even do this. <laughs> do you ever wish you just had someone be like, can you do that for me? <laughs> I'm kind of like, I feel that way lately about my, my, the line of patterns I'm working on. I'm like, oh, all these questions. I don't know what the right answer is. I mean, it's like once I just stop and stop freaking myself out and I read it, I'm like, okay, I know the answer to this. Of course I know the answer to this. I made this. But, you know, it's easy to freak ourselves out and have self-doubt and all that junk, you know? I feel like this would be easier to just um, use my... This is two by nine, on, but this is on the fold. That is one. This is the cupcake ruffle. Right? This is the cupcake ruffle. Yep. How about we just help ourselves out and write this on here? I know these are cupcake. Look, ruffle. All right, so my piece I already cut is correct. 
Where is it? Yeah, this is ruffle. Just breathe, don't everything exactly. That's what I did. I was like, okay, I've had kind of a crazy, weird, like weird things have happened week, you know, so I'm a little like, what's next? <laughs> bring it on? I don't know. I don't really feel bring it on right now. And um, when I saw the questions, I was like, okay, I can't, I'm not in the right head space and I'm dealing with all these other things I had to stream. And then when I looked at it yesterday, I was like, these are easy questions. You know these answers. <laughs> so exactly. Don't overthink it. Okay, so I have some, I have some like, I have quite the stash of wool felt from this, this project actually. So let's pick something I don't like. Well, it's not that I don't like, but I wouldn't use probably. Probably wouldn't use this, but I don't think that's big enough. This orange piece looks big enough to use later, so we'll save it. I love this one. Let's see. I think I'll use this. This isn't, I can tell this isn't the greatest. This is not normally how I treat my scraps, but my wool is a mess. I haven't dealt with it in years. Okay. I think I got flower petals in here, all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh yeah, the floor is already. Uh... <laughs> That's a good idea, Shanika. They do. They are, they do have really good price patterns. Um, did what? Someone else is having a pattern sale right now. Who is it? Who is it? All right, so let's see. Maybe I should iron this. Maybe I should iron this. Okay, so there's that. And I don't usually cut right here. It's just really confined. Okay, and this and this. I'm just kind of curious what. So this is the top. And I have a feeling that you sew this to this, turn. And then you can sew the um, filling to that. It all sounds so easy right now. But I know better. I know better, you guys. I really do. I'm just going to cut this out real quick so I can sew something. See how it is. Um, this is definitely not a pattern you'd ever want in production. I have a feeling I did that and I never did this, the prototype. There's not really a green line with wool felt. But that being said, could probably do better, huh? All right, prototype, obvious prototype, right? Better to set yourself up to succeed though, so, you know. I really like little things, but um, I'm not very good at sewing them. So I, I really love seeing how many people came to sewing because they had like a Barbie doll and they wanted to make clothes for it. I was not a Barbie kid. I was pretty, pretty insulted when someone gave me a Barbie once because um, I was not that kind of girl. I played Dukes of Hazard. thank you very much, and ride my bike. So, all right. So that's all those pieces cut, I mean, traced, and so I can just cut. I try to be good about not cutting around my pattern pieces. I still do it though, sometimes. But something this narrow, not a good idea. I'm not sure I should add the stiffener, you know? I feel like that makes it a lot harder, but maybe it loses 
too much body. Hmm. These are the things. See, I can't imagine doing releasing this pattern and, and then having like people sew it and they're like, what? <laughs> That's why I'm like, eh. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> It's a little too contrived. I really wanted like a snail. Like I started wanting everything as a pin cushion, you know? And I actually do have a snail over there, but I knit it. It's cute, but maybe, um, do you guys remember Beth's white? Oh. The, their hair got long or short. You could do that to the doll? I don't remember that. I was really not a doll person. I was definitely a tomboy. I've told you guys, like, when they put me in sewing, I was so offended. It's so bad. Like, the fact that, like, as, as a feminist, I feel like that's kind of sad that that's how I felt about it. You know? That I was just like, I don't do these girly things. The fact that I was disdainful of that is, I feel very disappointed in myself for that, you know? But then when I really, when I saw the engineering side of it, which I didn't know that was engineering, I was like, oh, I'm really into this. But no one told me, hey, you could be an engineer. Oh my gosh, I had a knob on the back to crank their hair back in. Or <laughs> Did it get tangled? How did the hair go up without getting tangled? What a mechanism. Oh. You know? All right, so I'm gonna procrastinate by putting my ruffle together first. I'm pretty sure I sew the ends down. That's awesome, Laura Jean. You know, um, Patel's water about a little coconut oil. Oh, oh my gosh, Mata, that does sound easy. Um, so, Laura Jean, the funny thing is, like, when people would say that that was their, like, gateway to sewing was doing clothes for their, their Barbies. I've heard a couple people with stuffies. I remembered that, um, I've told you guys this, that, um, I was never like a huge Snoopy fan, but I don't know, so I don't know why I did this, but I had Snoopy's girlfriend, Belle, which most people don't even know he had a girlfriend, and I made clothes for her, and so this is how your boys can get around it if they don't have a sewing machine. I use, remember twisty ties on your, on your bags? I mean, a lot of things don't have twisty ties anymore, right? They're all Ziploc and stuff. But that's, um, oh, this is so stiff. I probably should lengthen my stitch because this fabric's so um, tightly woven. Um, but that's how I did it. I would cut out the little clothes, then stick twisty ties through them to hold them on the, on bell. So I wasn't necessarily sewing, but I was, I, I was styling bell. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe she came with a few clothes and I wanted to add to it. That seems kind of familiar now. I also had a Kool-Aid collection in my bedroom, which I don't recommend, a dry Kool-Aid collection. Do you know how my mom found it? By the ant trail. So, you know, kid logic. So. Right, a quilter? I know. It's funny, we just can't shake it. I'm always like, yeah, and uh, who made your clothes? Probably not some old lady. <laughs> By the way, I'm not old. <laughs> okay. Sewing is engineering. We don't give ourselves enough credit for how hard it can be fitting a three-dimensional object that moves and changes sizes, you know? 
All right, I'm gonna lengthen my stitch here. I don't usually. This, this ruffle looks so wide. You know? What stuffies do they want to dress? Who's naked? <laughs> Oh my, Evil Knievel jumpsuits for, <laughs> I'm sorry, I really don't like ventriloquist dummies. I do not understand that hobby. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, hey, Terry, I know, there's no in between. Like, oh, can you um, make this for me? It's like, well, no. I think um, the, the the way I think about, why didn't I put two rows in? Look at that. See, this is why you don't put two rows in, you guys. Or you do put two rows in. You see that? See how the gathers are folding on itself? If I had put two rows in and wasn't lazy, they would it would be nice and flattened, and the seam allowance would look like more like this rather than wanting to fold up. Now it's fussy. All right. Um, I have thought a lot about that whole thing of like will you make this for me you know or can you do this and um i understand why people ask right i totally do there's nothing wrong with it it's the it's for me it's rooted in the fact that we don't most people don't realize it's a skill and when you think of anything when as being a at the level of being skilled and you don't understand that it's a skill, then that's where the the disconnect is, you know? <laughs> right, Laura Jean? My daughter was a nudist too. <laughs> she liked dressing her animals too, and her doll. <laughs> oh God, I bet Lisa, I'll bet everyone knew where that ventriloquist, what the dummy was in the house. It was always in the back of their minds where it was at in the house. Should have put it in the guest room. Guests love that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so like I feel like if it's, if, uh, and here's the rub. If you have a mechanic friend, do you feel like they owe you like mechanic work? You don't. So I think it's just that, like maybe it's rooted in the fact that a lot of people didn't think the person that sewed for them was like, like they made it look so easy. It's like, oh, that must be easy for them. Um, they didn't realize how, what it took to get there. Maybe it's like, oh, you know, a, a woman did it. It can't be that hard. You know, I try not to think too extremely like that, but you know, there's something to it. So... Oh, really, Alicia? Yeah, I totally know that one. Hi, Brookie. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, Alicia, totally. Oh, can you hem my pants? Yeah, my. well, you guys saw my husband's uh, co-worker gave him a dirndl for me to, to, like, fix. Oh, here, can you give this to your wife to do? Like, <laughs> Alicia, that's a good response. Nope, I can't. I just tell people I don't know how. Hey, if they're not tuning in here, they have no clue. Okay, so this, I've never sewn this this way. Okay, so there's that one, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, I think I've thought about it a lot because I'm like, okay, why do people think that they can just say, hey, can you do this for me? What is it that gives that there's no barrier there? You know, like... I want to understand it instead of being mad at them. <laughs> because it's so common, there's no reason to be mad at people, but it's that common that people just think there's some sort of common misconception about it. They don't realize. And I, if I knew my neighbor um, fixed cars, I would never go to him and say, hey, my car's making a weird noise. Will you fix that for me? 
you know? So I don't know why we don't do that, but we will say, hey, can you, can you replace, I love these pants, but the zipper broke. Can you replace the zipper? And you're like, you know, the person at the alteration shop who you should be talking to doesn't want to do that either, but they will, you know, so. Yeah, so. Yeah, Alicia, exactly. I know, Alicia, you know, I literally got to the point where I just tell people I don't, I don't know how. And, you know, then I went one step further and my friend who was doing a lot of sewing, I just said, hey, you know what? Um, there's enough alterations in this town. You could do your own business. And she started one and she found me later. She's like, you're right. I'm full time. I'm more than full time busy. I'm like a few weeks out. Um, and over the years, she definitely had her frustrations with it. But it, I think it's her stop is still there. She's had it for probably 10 years now or more. More. Because she started when I had a freelance business. And um, she named it So What, which was really cute. And that's what I would do, Alicia. I also, I've gone to so, so far as to find out the names of the places in my town here. And I just say, no, but so-and-so does it. You know? Right, Megan? Exactly. Hi, Bootsy. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Jan. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll help some people, and it's hard, you know, like, for my husband, I'm like, you know, if it was his boss, I'd be like, okay, but, hello. All right, so now here's the hard part. So this is, this is one of the things, this is the bottom, this is the top. How do I do this again? So... So I have to do, let's see if I can do this here. Oh, I don't think that'll fit. Maybe I should have attached this one to this to this first. I think that would have been a good plan, actually. I, I'm scared to clip this, but I think I need to right now. So I'm not stretching it. It's the moment of truth here. How do I sew something I designed? <laughs> this reminds me of times when people would be like, oh, here, here's the prototype. I, I want this, make the pattern for me. And then I'd be like, all right, well, at least they have a prototype. And then I'd look at it and it was so jury rigged. You know, like, I'm like, oh, this is not sewn. Like, yeah, you got it to go together, but there's no way anyone else could, you know? So. Yeah, exactly, Alicia. And, you know, I mean, if you ever see one of them, you can actually, like, pop your head in and see, like, do they look like they're doing Look at their reviews. So at least you can confidently be like, here, try these people. And then they might come back and be like, wow, you know, thanks so much for telling me about that place now i'm bringing everything there and you'll be like yep <laughs> exactly you're liking how these colors are coming together well it's kind of a prototype let's see did i actually get that oh i did get that okay all right all right i know it's kind of it's kind of fun so this was the other thing i i would now attach the crust so here, I'll give you guys the model. So see, I'm I'm on um, I'm on the bottom. So I would sew it like this. But see, I have to. Okay, here's the this is the other thing. So now this has to sew like uh yeah, like this. No. Oh yeah, like this, to the top here. Yeah, the ruffle goes there. Okay, so it goes like this. <laughs> I'm making, I'm trying to make a pie. <laughs> it's my first one. But I left myself the last time I made it with new pattern pieces I don't think I ever tried. So I thought I'd just try it. 
I like the way this looks right now. This is easier. But so when I get to this point, you have to be able to sew this to this. I have to be able to turn this corner. So I remember when stitching this down, it puts this little lip right here. All right, I'm just gonna stitch. I have to. I just have to do it, even if it's wrong first, to um, see how to fix it. So that's just kind of how my mind operates. So I'm gonna stitch the crust here. It's one of those patterns where you're like, why did I think this was so hard? And then um, you get to the last step and you're like, oh, we're here, we're here, <laughs> we're at the hard part. All right, so look at that, that looks so good, right? Um, no problem. <laughs> Chocolate chip pie. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, Bootsy, he totally. <laughs> you, you, Jan. Okay, so. Um, this was a little too long. I can't remember why. See? Oh, here's another thing. I could. It can happen. It can be off center. All right. So now we need to sew. Um, I, do I sew this on next? Let's see. Let's read the directions. So two top crosses with one stiffener. Forgot the stiffener. Um, and turning clip. I know I'm gonna need some pie after this. Now I want chocolate pie. I haven't had chocolate pie in so long. So one top crust to bottom crust with stiffener and turn. Tack ruffle to top crust. So filling to top and bottom turn. Hand sew shut. Sounds so easy. <laughs> and like this goes to like there. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna attach my ruffle. Um, just so it's done. Which one's the, this one is, okay. Let's see, I need to turn my light on. It's a little dark for me. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time making sure my ruffles are perfect. Cause I should have put the two rows in, you know, it's like you waffle when you're a production sewer with like, okay, doing an extra stitch here is more time. But if I spend time, less time later on something, then it's worth it. You know, like a lot less or just not being frustrated. Like if you dread sewing something, it's best to address, look at my seam allowance. It's awful right now. Shoot. Um, it's best to address why you hate sewing it. Otherwise you're just, you're going to also not put effort into selling it. If you don't like it, you're probably gonna be like, yeah, but look at this other thing over here. <laughs> Buy it instead. <laughs> That's when you know you gotta like address the sewing or, um, you know, not make it anymore. And that's kind of where I probably got with these. I think they were getting a little too popular. <laughs> so I had to get rid of it. And I think I didn't sell these for cheap. I think I sold them, at the time it didn't seem cheap. It was probably for like $24 or something. And it wasn't enough, it just wasn't enough. Better to have other people sew those th types of things. All right, that's okay. Let's get rid of this thread though. Oh, I'll just cut it. Okay. All right, now the hard part. The other thing, I always left this edge open to the hand sewing, which was kind of tough, you know? In fact, I actually think I sewed the ruffle to this piece, so I wasn't hand sewing on the front. And right now, I just did it so that the hand sewing is gonna be on the front. So maybe what I'll do is put the hand sewing, can I put the hand sewing somewhere else? Oh my God, how do I do this? This gets sewn to here. This gets sewn. I have to turn, oh here, like this. I have to turn, oh my God, you guys. All right, so let's find the center of this first. All right. 
This is most important, this alignment right here. Um, how did I do that? Like this, like this. Turn the corner like this. I don't like sewing this already. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna start at this pivot point. Uh, I might want to do this on the other side, the from the from this side, but let's see. Let's see if it's easier. Cause remember, I sewed this one from the the fabric side. It doesn't look fun to sew, right? You guys are gonna be like, oh, never mind. <laughs> oh really Jan that's funny <laughs> so this is the thing though I would have to sew a lot of these and figure out a way to make them palatable for people to sew you know because I'm not gonna like put something out there people are like well that was a pain I never wanted one of those I want to buy the pattern and be like oh I'm gonna make a ton of these for Christmas gifts and be like okay I got one done <laughs> And I wasn't even thinking of selling this pattern. I was just going to make it a free download. Then you can't complain. Right? I'm going to have to turn on the air conditioner. I want this little... Do I? No, 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 no. I want... Oh, shoot. I want that to go there. Okay, okay. I was actually trying to line up the wrong center point. The old center point. I'm going to turn my air conditioner on. <laughs> I, I just wanted to sew one through two also to be like, maybe I would have a some sort of epiphany on how to do these easier. <laughs> I kind of want to start from the center. Starting from the center is not a good idea uh, for all sewing, but I'm going to start for my prototype. Like, I don't even think I can get in there. This needs to get to here. And I turn and I don't know, I don't know. I think all my brain cells went into my kid too, you know? Do I turn here? Do I turn there? Ooh, I don't think I turn right there, but let's, let's see. You would just hand sew the, exactly. The fake it, right? That's the way to do it. I think I just, see, look at the seam allowance, right? This is for my ruffles, pretty bad. Um, I think I may have just misaligned this pretty badly, but we'll see. Remember, I still need to sew the um, edge of the crust. Okay, and I didn't sew one side. This one right here, yeah. Let's see. I have a little opening still. This doesn't feel right. <laughs> I'm probably going to have a hole at the point, too. I think it would have been good to sew the narrow pieces to the filling first. 
you know? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have a little pucker right here. Okay, yeah. Don't look at that. Yeah, right? Yeah. And she was 13, oh. Did your mom want one for all that time and they just wouldn't give it to her? Or did she finally go, you know, my friends are into this, I kind of like this idea too. Megan, I was talking to Megan. <laughs> okay. I love, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with Alicia. I love this yellow, this color yellow. I really want like things in it, like clothing. And I asked the woman with fabric store, I was like, do you think this would be okay? I mean, she's like, I don't think so. I was like, dang it. I really love this mustard yellow color. That's what color I still picture my hair. <laughs> your grandma thought you were trash looking. Yeah, well, some of them kind of were, you know. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I didn't see. I didn't get that. All right, so let's see. Would this have worked? And so this is my hand sew spot right here. Not the most ideal hand sewing spot because that would be kind of hard. Plus, I need to sew the crust into the, like, um, oh, yeah. So I don't want it there because although... I could skip the hand sewing. Oh wow, really? Oh. Right. Fun fact, Bootsy, I used to live near the Roy Rogers Museum and I've been to it like twice. And Trigger was there, like stuffed. Taught by nuns, yeah. Okay, so Here's one thing I discovered, like, well, let's see how it, let's see how the side looks. This is the side I sewed. So if this was stitched, see how this one, I have the lip going all the way around. I think, um, and that, that doesn't line up as the same. Let's see here. So if this, So if it was stuffed right now, yeah, see, look at that. See this one right here, this one's down here. But if I did it somehow, I could actually make it so that I didn't have to hand sew it. Because when I do this step, I could, I could do the um, closing. Yeah. This went a little better than I thought, honestly. <laughs> it's it, I remember it not being feeling great. Do you still watch those old shows? <laughs> Nellie Bell, I don't remember Nellie Bell in the Jeep. I don't know what that, oh yeah, Chatty Kathy. In fact, I actually, Polly, have a, um, sorry, I'm like a cockeye on my seat. Um, I have this little antique table um, that is a chair with a little desk right next to it. It's a phone table. Have you seen those? I'm sure you guys have seen those before. And so you were supposed to sit there and be on the phone. And mine's really cute because the like back is like waves. And um, I've recovered the seat. And I call they, my husband calls it the chatty ceremony table because I'm like, oh, I would be like, I know what this is. And I sat there and I went, <laughs> we bought it. And he was like, okay. <laughs> chatty Kathy was a doll though. It had nothing to do with the phone table. So, oh my gosh, that's great, Bootsy. 
Okay, so you made a Lou box in yellow linen from Joanne's. Oh, I'm kind of jealous of that. Which one's the Lou box? I've heard of that. It's a pullover top, right? I like woven pullovers. All right, so this isn't too bad, you guys. Except right here. See, like this one, not bad. I, that would be fine with me. That one, not so much. Um, I didn't get the point here correct. Not bad. First time I've sewn one in more than 10 years. The mustard is good. It looks like crust. <laughs> Pervert, that's awesome. Oh, I think I do not want Alicia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I like keyhole backs. I like keyhole fronts, too. Cookie cake. We, we're all going to be like, I don't know how to explain it, but I need pie after the stream. Um, my husband really likes like cherry or cherry pie type things. And when I was at my at Target with my mom on that ill-fated trip the other day, <laughs> um, I saw uh, my mom was like, "Ooh, those don't those don't those look good." And it was a box of Entenmann's, and they were little cherry pies. And so I bought it for my husband. Oh, I wonder where those are. He's out of town. <laughs> so bad. Here, here's a box of cherry pies. Wait, where are they? <laughs> forgot I hid the Halloween candy. Oh my god. Okay. You guys, this isn't so bad. This is a problem. I need to just redesign that. What is going on there? I may not be able to do this on camera. I'd have to probably really think about this. It's not bad though. crest looks like it's about the same off as this one. It literally looks like pie. Wouldn't it be cute? You could sew little like, um, you know, like say you had just a shade darker, you could do the little vents first. You know, I always do leaves, but I don't want to sew a leaf. I always just did like polyfill with a, um, and then on my cupcake, it had um, gravel inside for weight. Wait, is, this, is that right? No, it doesn't look right, does it? You know, you know what I was going for, though? Maybe it would be, like, here? No. You know what I mean. You know, wool felt so great because you can just stitch it and it doesn't, it doesn't fray, right? All right, so let's see. Let me think about this. Where's my piece of paper? I got a piece of paper. And, um, let's let me think about this. So this. It's this juncture right here. But I like that I could close it with the machine. Yeah, I should make a watermelon pick cushion. Yeah. I love watermelon so much. Yeah. Reverse applique for the vents. That would be so cute though. Yeah. I wonder if there's watermelon fabric like that that stuff the photo kind of looking one I could make one spoon flower boy spoon flower wasn't what it was what it is today back then either I love watermelon I could make ice cream cake ice cream pie how do we feel about like the what if the filling I mean, I know the answer to this, but what if the filling went all the way to here, you know? <laughs> the, hi, Carrie. Is there a design reason you don't have a seam at the point of the pie? Yeah, like, you mean, like, do it here? 
Like the filling come all the way out to the crust. Is that what you mean? The only reason I don't do that, if that's your question, is um, I, I like the definition of the crust. It makes it look more like pie. Um, in a way, this design's a little stuck in my head that it's hard to get for me to get over the hurdle of how it already is. It's almost like I'd have to like scrap the design and start over. Um, but this right here, I'm wondering actually if this section here should be a sec uh, like a sec second section without, you know, like not a continuous piece right here. If that would help distinguish no vertical on the front. Oh, oh, right here. Um, there's no reason except that it would probably be a point of stress because you, um, you probably can't tell, but I'm, I'm really pivoting hard right there as I'm sewing and I'm kind of pulling hard and that's kind of why like this top one didn't really work. Can you see that? I have a hole right there. I faked it. So, um, and when I did the little like notch for the center, it felt a little iffy. Like I, maybe I should draw the center marking rather than clip it because the clip weakened that point for the pivot. You just pulled the strip on your TV and it looks like you start, really? Could it, can it do that, Jan? Maybe you can fast forward. The idea of being on your TV makes me a little sweaty. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Matzo pie. I yeah, I wasn't over a TV two bootsy. But I, I fall short in a lot of other other areas, trust me. I'm a gamer. Right? I'm already like people already look down on me because I play video games. I'm like, look I'm good at real life too. You watching older streams on your TV? Is it hard though? Because you only want to join the chat. <laughs> you always watching the big screen. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should start wearing makeup. <laughs> if I wore makeup, you guys would be like, no. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, it would be fun to applique the top of the pie before. I thought of those kinds of things when I was um, sewing these, but um, I didn't want to set that bar a little higher because I would have to keep doing it for the same cost. Oh my god, don't do that, Lisa. How's the resolution? Like, is it sharp on their screens? I put the sharpness way up. Like, my hands don't, they, my hands aren't very attractive, but they, I, I put the, the sharpness all the way up so you guys can see as much detail as possible. Oh, yeah, yeah, Alicia, exactly. Right, Megan, exactly. I know I saw someone post, like, they posted this whole thing about gamers that they're um, overweight, never leave the house, don't make any money, live off other people. And the all the gamers I watch, they, like, work out six days a week. They're, like, keyed up guys, you know? They're, like, I got to work out. <laughs> and, um... You know, they have, like, reminders in their chat to drink water. And, yeah, they don't eat that great. But they're, like, young guys mostly. So the little box is small. So you're safe exactly, Carrie. <laughs> I'll have to do a no-cam stream sometime. I didn't clean my glasses. Can you tell? Because for me, it's all, like, it's bad. Um, I should clean my glasses. Yeah, so it was pretty funny. Like, that poor guy, I was like, this is attention-seeking. He just wanted negative attention so everyone would look at his Twitter, you know? <laughs> yes, Eliza, I totally do. <laughs> right, Bootsy? Exactly. My hands have never looked that great. And it's really funny. Like, one time, Rayanne was filming me do something with my hands. And um, she, she did a great job. And then as we were watching it, I didn't, hadn't said a word, and she hadn't said a word. We were watching it, and at the very end, she looks at me, and she goes, your arms and hands don't look that bad in person. <laughs> it was so 
so funny because it was the only thing on my mind like oh my gosh how long the hairs are on my arms it was so funny that she was just her i just started laughing so hard i was like thank you for saying that <laughs> crack up so then i posted it so your phone's by the tv i know it's a little confusing oh thanks rebecca <laughs> You guys are sweet. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm going to try and cut into another one, but let's see here. I need to figure this little... I have some ideas, but none of them... I feel like they're all pedestrian. You know, I I start... My nails were so great at the beginning of summer, and I started wearing clear nail polish. You guys couldn't tell because it was matte. And my nails have suffered. Look, at they're terrible now. So I learned that I can't wear, I can't wear nail polish. And my nails were ruined last summer because me and my daughter went and got manicures and they did the gel thing and I didn't know what that was. And I, my nails turned paper thin, wouldn't grow. It was so scary. So, um, yeah, they look really bad right now. And it's, I, so I realized, okay, nail polish isn't for me, unfortunately. Maybe I, if I did it all the time, it wouldn't be a big deal, but I don't know. Okay, so I like making this a separate thing and this a little separate piece that has issues. <laughs> Maybe if I could get this lined up better, it would be easier. I'm going to try and just sew another one as is. Um, that way. That way, um, I, because I've already done it once through, right? So if I do another one, now that I'm aware of little things that are going to happen, and I don't know why this didn't work. I mean, does this work? Does it work? You know, maybe it doesn't work. Oh yeah, that doesn't, that's too, <laughs> it's too long. The dip, what's the dip? Yeah, tell us, tell us. I don't know what the dip is. I'm really glad in this way the internet is there for like my daughter because I feel like that is one thing I never really got the hang of doing anything hair makeup any of that stuff any of the maintenance with it and I don't know if it was because I just wasn't interested or I wasn't around people talking about it and doing it but I do feel like that's really lacking for kind of my growing up part of it because it was only a year and a half ago that I started styling my hair i mean i know it's not big of a style but if you saw it right out of the shower it's it's like living here it's not it's not very tame so i started i learned how to use a wand and me and my sister were like trying to figure it out together and it was like the first like really sisterly thing we'd ever done is like like that and i was visiting her and i was like you dude i got this thing i don't really know how to do it kept burning i couldn't figure out how to keep it on you know it was like all those things only a year and a half that's not very long people have been using those those implements for you know, since, since they were in high school. I tried feathering my hair back then, but I just, I don't know. So, a powdered nail polish. <gasps> really, Jan? Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> Liza, we're a bad influence. You need to get your hair cut. I get my hair cut very regularly. That's how I got it long, you know. So. <laughs> Eliza, focus, focus. <laughs> I'm glad we're, you're here with us, though. Okay, so now I know that wasn't my sewing. It was the pattern for that. Um, I'm, just, I'm doing such a bad cut, thing cutting out. I need some weights. Maybe I should iron my felt. Okay, let me be a little more responsible here. Turn on my iron. Let's see, I didn't even check.
check the iron cam. Look at my cute little iron cam words. It's so cute now. I love it. That happy little iron. This is when you learn if it's wool felt or not. <laughs> when you melt your wool to the iron. Oh, there's no water in here. Let's see, is there water in here? A little bit. An iron looks more realistic. That's true. I know, isn't the antique iron so cute? I, I actually was like, what kind of iron? There were like 50 irons. And um, I, I was like, maybe I need one with eyeballs. And that was the only one. I was like, this is perfect. That's what I use for weights. <laughs> I know the wrinkled look is more authentic, but I want my pieces to be accurate when I cut them out. So I really need to do myself a favor. Especially since if it was stuffed, it would... <laughs> It wouldn't stay wrinkled anyway. So, there we go. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Can I make which one into um, one piece? This right here? I can't make this one. Because it's the lining on the edge. So this is already way easier to handle. <laughs> you know? Okay. I might have to get a different fabric for the filling, though, so that I can tell them apart. I'm sure I can tell them apart, but you know what I mean. That'd be better. Okay. We'll share some lines here. There we go. Oh, that's a good question, Eliza. I saw that um, Seamwork did a new snippets. And they talk about the clapper. I didn't I didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like uh, when I was making my mummy costume Bootsy. I was like, okay, I really want this to look like ripped pieces of fabric. Not my mummy costume. I actually made one for me. That's not true. Um, but wait, I made one for my daughter. I ripped all the pieces and then I sewed them to an, a little little shirt and pants that I made. <laughs> and so that they looked like it was wrapped around, but it wasn't. It has to be a hardwood. That makes that makes sense. Yeah, we should probably try that. The clapper. I don't know why, but it, that the term the clapper conjures to, something totally different. You made one out of oak. I wonder if there's a a template on how to make one. Who asked about the which wood, Eliza? Do you guys use those um, regularly? One of those? I learned so much from you guys. Let's just have a, a moment of quiet respect for a new blade. Am I right? So, um, hi Samira. Well, today I am, we're just hanging out and sewing together. I don't know how much sewing these guys are doing, these gals, <laughs> but I uh, have this little pin cushion I used to make a long time ago and sell and I haven't for a really long time and I thought it'd be kind of fun to get the pattern out and see if I can 
get it kind of back in action and maybe make it a free downloadable pattern. It looks like a little piece of pie. So we sewed one just now. Um, this, you know, I'm with you, Alicia. This is actually like, I don't know why, but it looks cute. It looks kind of cute, even though those are all just kind of scrap fabrics. Now I'm working on Proto 2. Now that I've sewn one, I kind of, you know, got my feet under me. I know where the trouble spots are. I'm going to try and sew one with the trouble spots in mind. I'm going to make it look a little easier to sew so you guys aren't all like, forget this. We don't want this pattern. I do have a free Notions case pattern if you sign up for the newsletter and the uh, closet organizer. I want to kind of save that. All right, so let's move this out of the way. We'll leave that there. We'll put the iron out of the way too. <laughs> Could I make the outside piece as one versus two? This one right here? I need the ruffle seam right there. This one couldn't be two, one piece. The outside piece. You mean these two? I need the seam for the definition. I can't fold around the edge. Oh, I need, I need filling. Oh, so Alicia, you did. Oh, how do you say your name, Samira? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yay, Candace is sewing. There's the, there, you didn't have a template, Alicia, so let's see, you did a rectangle piece about four inches, four wide and two inches tall and rounded the edges of the jigsaw and then cut a finger groove on the side of the router. Oh. Yeah. No, no, the thin, okay. Yeah. You guys sharing, um, Clapper recipes now. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go look for another piece of fabric for the filling, so I can set them apart. Tell them apart. Okay, I'm saying it right, but cuter. What do you mean? That's a cute name. Us S A names need to stick together. Mine's Sarah me. <laughs> okay, so flower pie. Okay, so what did I think? I thought last time it would be better to um, not notch my center. I know this is too long. I want the flower in the middle, even though I know it's just a prototype. <laughs> so we'll mark it with pen. Okay. Let's actually figure this out here. So let's see if it's Let's draw it on here. That's one way I could help myself to know if my pattern's accurate. Cause you know, the thing is I might be sewing it inaccurately and the pattern's okay, you know? So then that would be, you know, my bad. So if I come down Uh, 
Well, that might be a little hard for me to figure out where the center. I, I kind of want this flower to be the the center, but um, I may just have to <laughs> deal with what I get. You know. I'm confusing myself too, it's not helping. All right, so let's see if I take off, let's see if we take off three quarters of an inch. I think I'll take a half inch off, just to be sure. I just looked at the piece I cut off of the other one to see this is how much it's off, right? So, dropping things. I just cut this much off that piece. So that's, that's about right. <laughs> oh, that's right. You got the gravity feed iron. It's pretty exciting. Um, I'm going to sew it right sides to this one just in case I don't nail my seam allowance on that one because, well, actually I kind of want to though. I wanted to use this pin mark. I want to see. Because uh, I didn't want it to show on the outside, but we're just doing prototypes. Doesn't matter. Okay, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to move all these tools. That's what I'm going to do. There's too many things here. I'm going to clip down to the center. I'm going to pull this around. Look at that, lined up really nicely. That was way better this time. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I know, it looks really polished, huh? Totally cheating. Getting cute fabric over there. This is old fabric. I worked with, with this designer. <laughs> um, all right, so then we have this right sides together. Did I catch my own? Oh, no, I did. All right. Okay. We're doing okay so far. That's how it always feels at this point. <laughs> the gravity feed, is that the one, Terry, where um, the ironing board has a mild suction so all of your pieces pull down to the ironing surface, right? I've used one of those before, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, wider boards are boards are nice, Ray. I'm I know I'm not using a traditional ironing board, but there's nothing I use a traditional one at home and I really like it. Um I it was just my setup here required me having this at my old place. And I actually gotten really attached to this this uh wool felt one. And that's why I use it. Um but I really like it. I'm gonna bring it tomorrow. Am I weird? I'm going to bring it to that quote cool class. I'm trying. I'm such a new. I'm going to show up and be like, I'm here <laughs> with my entire sewing room. And a home machine I never use. So forgive me if I don't know how to use it. <laughs> I'm going to be like, wow. <laughs> All right. So. I'm going to sew the crust right now. I just really can't get away with not doing it early on because if I don't, so my problem right here, this is what I think, I, I'm having trouble describing why um, this is tricky and it's right here. So anytime you're gonna sew up to this edge right here, this edge, it's not sewn yet. So now it leaves this, this edge as a seam, but this right here is sticking out all by itself, right? So, I mean, one thing I could do is sew across this at a quarter inch seam, right? And so then this would end right here. And then I wouldn't have to worry about it. And so what would that be like? It would be 
this is the top, it would be right there. It would be kind of loose. It's an idea. Bye, Alicia. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Um, I don't know what I'm sewing next week. Sorry, otherwise I'd tell you like, hey, come back, we're gonna do this. But I haven't really decided yet. I don't know why. I forgot, honestly. I need to figure that out. I was thinking about doing the Lucerne blouse by Cheyenne, uh, not by Cheyenne, by Hey Jean Handmade. Yeah, so what if I We'll do one side one way and the other side the other way. Okay. So what if I sew across this? It's probably not enough. Did it very, very narrow? Okay. Like this. Yeah, I don't think actually that was uh, gonna work. I don't think that's gonna work. So if this one goes to here, sometimes you gotta do also, like I actually do, do think there could be some merits to this, but um, even if you don't, it's good to do it all the way through so you know you can kind of cross that off the list and figure out, you might understand something more about it once you do something else. Okay, yeah, this is, getting in here is actually almost impossible now. Because remember, I'm gonna stitch this down like this. Like this. And I was thinking that way, if this edge was finished right here, if this edge was finished, then when I go to sew this, I have a seam, but it doesn't look very good. Oh, a solid wood ironing board that has a chair. That's pretty cool. All right, so if this was sewn here and I top stitch this down to get my crust effect. Why is this so bad? Okay, let's do this. Oh, but that's not how it goes. It goes like this. Okay, 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 okay. That's wrong, okay. What was I just thinking I could do? Was it... You know, um, I follow this uh, gal, I can't think of her name, um, and she does stuffed animals. I'll bet if I made a few of hers, maybe something would click for me. Okay, so, let's so like this. Oh, I see. I needed to sew that to that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put this back now that I've trimmed it too. down. I know I want this straight because it's going to show on the bottom. Let's just straighten out the point by doing that. <laughs> we'll fake it. <laughs> I 
Abby Lassiter. Ah, I was gonna say Allison. Lisa, thank you. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You knew exactly what I was talking about. Okay, now I want to do this one to this. And... It goes like this. This goes to this um, pivot point. So basically, see this what I'm talking about. So this right here, this little wing here, if it weren't there, it'd be kind of easier to figure out. So I need this to extend a quarter inch past this seam. Not past this edge when I flatten it, but past the seam right here, right? So I do that and that. Pivot. I think I'm almost there. Okay. Wow, that is cool, Megan. Dang. Yeah, take pictures and put it on Instagram. You don't have to clean it. We don't care. So then I do this, and it'll be sewn like that. And this goes to here. See this, this is where I'm talking about. So this little edge right here sticking out is the, um, makes the little weird bump right here. Like this is, I got pretty good at that. You know, this doesn't bug me. I don't think it would bug anybody. This is nice and continuous. But why, why can't this be continuous here? Oh, 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 what if this had been sewn to this here, to this piece, right? So you sew these two together, oh my gosh. Okay, I actually think I figured out how to work. I don't think my machine can do it, but you would sew these two together. And you'd sew these two together. Right? This would be one. You'd still have to get the filling in there. I bet you all thought when I was like, watch me figure this out, you'd be like, it'll be easy. Um, I didn't do, did I do the chop stitching of the crust last? I don't think I did when I sewed one. It's easier when you have less attached. That's why I did this one. But this, you have to do the top stitching before you attach these two together. But that's why I just was thinking, Carrie, I think, I think you, you're kind of thinking the way I'm thinking, like, what if I, because one of, one or two of you have said, why can't you make this one piece? So I need an opening spot to stuff it and to turn it. Because at one point I have to put this all right sides together and turn it right side out. Um, currently that is the back here or right here. The last one though, I just did on the side. But what if none of this was stitched here and this was stitched to here, this little narrow piece, this narrow piece, and then, oh, dang, I, I have an idea, okay. Um, what do I need to recut? I have the U and the U. I need to recut this and this. Oh, I hope this doesn't leave my head. <laughs> um, and I need to cut this. 
All right, let me go cut this. Let's uh, trim this down right now, though, too. I'm just gonna go to my table. It'll be a little faster and easier. Last piece to cut. I'm getting really into this mustard felt. I like it. <laughs> All right, wait, let me see what you guys came up with. I don't know. Let me see. So right now, yeah, I mean, sometimes I have these and I'm like, Ooh, and then I'm like, why did I think that would work? Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so let's see. If I sew this piece, yeah, like my, my thinking is that this solves one issue but creates a completely different one that is even harder to solve, which is putting the filling in. Okay. So I have this and then I have this. I have to um, leave an opening. Okay, so I don't have my ruffle on here. Um, I don't even have a ruffle. Let's see, maybe I could. Oh, I know. Here we go. This is what I was going to use for ruffle. That's right. So um, what is it again? One for filling, cut one for ruffle, two by nine. Two by nine, here we go. Sorry, I got a couple texts, I'm just checking them out. All right, so, is this really how small my ruffle is? <laughs> is this it? <laughs> this looks funny. This is also biased. It's totally cheating, you know, it was already cut. I had brought it over here. Two rows of tops together. Okay. So, you know, today is a, 
I know, I know, this is what Melin, I know what Melin's doing right now. <laughs> She's doing the Harry Potter Wizards Unite community day, community day thing. She's higher ranked than me too. Way higher. Yeah, maybe make a shorter ruffle. That's probably a smart idea. And they only have the community events from 11 to 2 on Saturdays, the exact times that I stream. So she's out there catching nifflers and hippogriffs and returning confoundables. <laughs> I'm friends with her on that thing. You can't interact with each other, but it is kind of fun to see. Yesterday I saw she brought back a hippogriff, or recently. <laughs> I was like, dang it, I want to bring back a hippogriff. <laughs> If you've heard of Pokemon Go, it, they have a Harry Potter version of it, basically. So, it's a walking app. Which I absolutely cannot do when I go on a walk. I'm usually with the dogs, and there's no way they want to stop and catch hippogriffs. So, today, like, there's this uh, new game app. You, got, you heard of Pokemon Go, right, Megan? They made a Harry Potter version of it. It's gaming, but it's a phone game. And it's called Wizards Unite. It's a free game. And then um, it's kind of cute. So you um, you walk to unlock um, port keys. So that's what the walking does. But while you're walking along the way, you're going to have to cast spells and things. And you just do this on your phone, you know, like you trace the spell. Um, it's cute. It's it's actually really, really good, too. My sister and her kids are doing it, you know, so it is. It's really fun. Um, I don't do it a lot, but today is a community day, which means, like, people will be out. They recently had, like, a Back to Hogwarts event, and so we were catching dragon eggs, you know, unlocking dragon eggs with our porkies, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> and then there's, like, you are returning confoundables. There's this whole elaborate story and Harry and Hermione or, you know, like Hermione's the Minister of Magic, I think, or something. She's not. I can't remember what she is, but, you know, they talk to you and do things and kind of get you pumped up to it. But. All right. It looks like I wrote on my stuff there. All right. So um, what is this? This is the top. Yes. Yeah, so let's put our... I'm just gonna put my ruffle kind of conservatively away from the edge there. Yeah, I think you're right, Megan. The ruffle's just a little extra. <laughs> a little too much. You know? Let's get the seam allowance a little better this time, too. Get the gathers right up the edge. There we go. Okay. Like I, you guys, I know a lot of ways I could make this pin cushion. I'm just really glued to the way of having the crust stick out on the sides. Don't think I did not try and um, make this streamlined way back when. I did, I did. It just, you know, and sometimes when you haven't seen something in a while, you, you might come up with something new. I'm hoping I do. Or maybe I've gotten better, you know, so. I know, right, Eliza? Crust is essential. Absolutely, kids. Exactly. All right, so now we have our... So let's try my new method this time. All right, so um, my thinking is I'm going to put this together, but I'm not going to sew the whole way. I'm just going to go part of the way. Right there. And then I'm going to go part of the way on this side. So there's my opening. Right. Um, so okay. So just to give you a visual, there's my opening back there. Hope hopefully I can turn the whole shebang through that hole, and I think I can. It would be easier. Norberta. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I looked yesterday. I was like, or not yesterday, a couple days ago. I was like, dang, Malin's like level twenty five. She's like, I think she's even higher than Kirby or twenty eight or something. I think I'm like. 17. <laughs> okay, we don't need this one, even though it looks really good. So now I have felt under my nail. That's weird. Let's 
So this, so this right here, I feel like this is gonna work. <laughs> yes, Carrie, totally. Yeah, and you, okay, so this is the other thing. I could pull up my game and show you guys if you want, but um, I know a lot of you are like, whatever. Um, there's ends to dine at and um, there's nurseries to grow plants. You plant seeds and you come back and your plant has grown and you harvest it. You can brew potions with your ingredients that you pick up on the map and pick up um, in the inns and the greenhouses from your seeds. And there are um, wizarding challenges and there's these like, they're not dungeons. What are they, Brooke? Are you still here? And then you go and you battle with other, um, you, people can help you. No one's ever there when I do it, so I've never done it with other people. Yeah, exactly, Carrie. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, it's fun. There's a lot. I feel like um, it's it's. Uh, I played the Pokemon Go and it came out to check it out. This feels richer. There's, it feels like there's a lot more to do in it. There's like pages of like collectible. So like when you've placed done the spell enough, you collect the item and it goes in your book. <laughs> And then these little community days give you other things, but I don't know. I'm not, like I said, I'm a pretty big Harry Potter fan, but I'm still not like no lifing this game, you guys. Because then you'd have to pay money for the, the, you have to have enough spell energy to cast spells and it takes one energy per spell. So if you fail the spell, you lost your energy, you know, so you can pay for that, but I don't want to pay for it. So, all right. So this is, might be the tricky part here. This is what I'm thinking. I'm going to sew this piece of filling to this whole thing here, right? But then once I have that, I'm gonna sew this, you know, right sides together, right? Then I'm gonna turn the whole thing right side out and then theoretically, <laughs> if I can, I'd be able to stitch around this crust. It's gonna be tight, like the idea sounds great, but We'll see. So let's see. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Um, like that. Um, let's let's give ourselves some center points here. I'm gonna I'm gonna clip it this time, even though it is a little bit of a uh, too loose. I mean, like it'll be a weak point, but I kind of want visually to be able to see where I'm going. So. So this is the side. I'm gonna start with the side. I'm gonna go quarter inch past that. Wish me luck. Do I wanna pivot there? Looks a little shy, but all right. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit more. Clip my point. <laughs> exactly. I got my mom and sisters totally hooked on that cat game, the fur Furistas Cafe. They're they're kind of mad at me that I'm not playing it anymore. All right, so look at that. I'm really far away from. Why am I really far away? I'm gonna try and make it. I need to make it all the way up to here. Oh, I, I did it. Amazing. All right, now we're gonna pivot again. Why is this so inside out? I feel like I'm, look at this. We got kind of a mess going on here. I have to, this is one of those tricky things where you have to like start the right way. There we go. It changes where you're, when you're on the inside versus the outside of the thing. 
Oh, there's my center. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh oh, let's see. Okay. Okay, this isn't that hard to sew. Okay. This is exciting. Okay. This is exciting. It's a Mobius pie. Yes, Lisa. Exactly. Okay, so here's my. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so now. Let's look at the corners here. So, you know, th those. I'm not in the center of this flower, but I am straight across. Because that makes that, that little pie crust point go like that, you know. All right, so this is the. Um, this. Is how it goes like this right no yeah yeah okay so I want right sides together like this okay I'm gonna split my seam allowances right here this is this is it oh my god I, I don't know is this really gonna work wait it's really gonna work what am I forgetting? I feel like I'm gonna be like, of course this doesn't work. What were they thinking? Going good, okay. I'm shocked right now. Okay. This whole thing gets sewn. Okay, yeah, it's, I'm like fiddling because I'm like, okay, is this it not working? Is it okay? But it's okay. All right. So where, where did I start? Did I start? Okay, so this is my seam right here. All right. Okay, so here's my open spot. I did leave that. That was the first thing I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was what I was worried about too, Carrie. All right, let's cut our points. What else do we think we need to trim? I think that's the only tricky spot. So, um, I think, uh, I, I don't know, Carrie. I think it, I think it worked. Yeah, I think it. Work. So here, I'm going to turn it now. What's this right here? What's that nonsense? Let's just look. Was that just my starting point? Okay. That's okay. That's acceptable. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's not stuffed and I don't have any stuffing. <laughs> And then um, I need to be able to stitch around the perimeter still, so. But look, that's what I wanted. See right here? This is what I wanted. So now I can tuck this in and stitch down. Oh, but I don't have to stitch it before it's stuffed. Yes. This totally worked. Oh, I'm so happy. I feel like that would be totally doable by anybody, too. I can explain that. Because we have a video, right? <laughs> I would just make a video. Here you go. Here's how you sew it. Ooh, 
Ooh, this is so exciting. Where's my chopstick? <laughs> okay. At this point. I'm pulling really hard. <laughs> okay. Moment of truth. So I'm going to stitch on this side. So yeah, it was probably good I backed the ruffle off and I could probably back it off a little bit more. Right, Carrie? <laughs> Exactly. Written directions would be a challenge. But you know what? If this is a free pattern, I'd be like, here's the video. I don't make money. <laughs> so I'm not going to like, I have to learn Lisa to like spend my effort in the right area, right? So if, um, I mean, I make, I make some money thanks to you guys. But that's for the stream. And that's what's important for me. So... Megan, I know, Pam's like, we want that pie. Megan's like, we want that pie. <laughs> yeah, right, Lisa? I think the video, we'll just do the, I'll write up something and be like, you know, you're going to need to watch the video. So, so let's see here. So I think I need to keep this. So my little, my, I could tell that um, for some reason, I think I cut this wonky because I know my seam allowance is right on the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake it because this shows on the top. See that? I'm going to fake the point right there. I'm going to pull this over so it stays out of the way. Ooh, I'm so excited. It would be so fun to be like, I have a pattern for you guys to play around with. So see, my if my ruffle weren't all the way to the edge, that would be better because I could keep going right here. But I'm going to stop and pick up push the ruffle this way and pick back up again. You know what the key is, you guys? You do it on really dark colored felt so no one can see all this part. <laughs> yeah. Well, that emote, what is that emote kit? It looks cute. <laughs> I was watching a, a tournament earlier and um, the chat was emote only. So they can't write text. And that's just so that people don't write stuff. <laughs> and um, I love those because I get to see all the um, no, like different emotes out there. And I'm like, well, that one's cute. I would subscribe to that channel just to have that. <laughs> yeah, burnt crust. That would be really funny, Carrie. That's the thing. That is one thing I feel like I'm really looking forward to my chicken boots patterns being out there is seeing how people change them. And what they do. And I'll be like, wow, why didn't I think of that? You know what I mean? Okay, wait. I need to get all the way at corner. Because this is the corner. And I turn. I started this in a bad... Look at that. I started that. That's bad. I should have started it there. But I was a, a wimp. So. I'm going to go all the way. I'm kind of pushing this back into this corner too. So it stays straight. That there. I'm going to pull this out a little bit. Yeah, I shouldn't have started right there. And minimal hand sewing. You're welcome. <laughs> it's hard to start right there because of the bump of the um, seams of the felt. All right, you guys. Good job. Food, what food fight event? Oh, I love all those special emotes. I got a bunch during Pride Month that are really cool. They're all rainbow and there's wings and they're really fun. I love using them. They're really pretty. Okay. Okay, so there's my little hole. And so we'd stuff it 
and then stitch it shut. Um, one of the things I, I wondered, and do you guys know this if this is true? If you put steel wool, will steel wool sharpen your pins and needles? You are, that's awesome, kid. Look, you guys, look at how tiny my crest is. <laughs> Well, good night, Kevin. Or not good night, but good luck on your camp shirt. I um, just so you guys know, I've always want. I always want to make sure I know. I don't follow you on Instagram if you're private. So, but um, I love seeing what you make, and if you tag me in it and you're private, I can't see it. But I would love. You can always DM me, Kevin. I'd love to see your camp shirt once it's done. Yeah, I'd use a dark brown thread to show thin crest by. You could do, you know, what would be really cute is if you found pizza fabric, pizza pie. Good job, you guys. You guys really helped me with this. Thank you. Oh, this is like better than it used to be. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut one in the blueberry and purple because I've missed that one so much. I'm so excited. This one's ready to go. Who wants it? <laughs> you can stuff and sew it. <laughs> the ruffle's kind of hilarious though. You could use um, bias, a single layer, and not even um, fold it in half, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make one. I I need a good ruffle though. What do I want? Okay, I think this is it. I think I got this to do it, but I think I like this better. Okay. <laughs> Lemon meringue. We figured it out, Rebecca. I'm so excited. I need to do the cupcake now too. <laughs> the, pump, the, the cupcake works. That's what I'm thinking of doing, Terry, is um, actually putting like a little magnet over here on my machine so that, because there's a little hole right there and my pie always goes that way. Yeah, so I could sit there and, I'm always like, where's my pie? Blueberry pie, I'm so excited. Um, you know, I don't have stiffener in here, but I don't really feel like it needs it. It could be an option, you know? So what do you guys think about putting the um, steel wool in there? This stuff sets my teeth on edge. No, I think you could carry it depending on how, um, you know, drape it is. I actually have some lemon fabric, but it's knit because I thought about that. You could do lemon meringue and then you could make a little like, you know, poof on top or something. But um, remember, it's a pin cushion. <laughs> okay, so. Let's cut this out now. You guys, it's so exciting. Okay, so this is the filling. That's hecka awkward. Um, and there's a direction to the blueberries. Yeah, I think um, 
a lot of fabric stores carry really great um, fruit prints. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know, Terry. That's what I'm wondering. Would it sharpen them? Because someone told me that that is what's in the strawberry on the tomato pin cushion. But someone else told me it's sawdust. Yeah, the tonal blenders. Yeah. Yeah, I know I have um, watermelon. <laughs> I just have watermelons. They don't do anything. <laughs> Is it sand? I know I've heard so many things. Corduroy would be fun and it would give you more stability. And the texture would be really fun. Um, yeah, I can see that. Okay. I would totally cheat if I wasn't sitting here doing this in front of you guys and do my blade against the pattern, but it's really awkward to cut under the camera. I'm going to bonk it. So, Well, you guys, this brings me back. So, you know, it's, for, it's fun revisiting this pattern that I haven't sewn for like 10 years. And um, I don't even remember designing it. I remember selling it. I don't remember the process of designing it. Isn't that funny? Oh, really, Carrie? That's what I wondered. I Yeah. I'm not surprised. And, you know, honestly, sharpening your pins and needles, just throw them away. You know, I don't think we should be sharpening our pins and needles. None of us needed them that bad. Like they're they're not they're not worth it, you know. This wool has a grain and a texture. Do you see the diagonal? It's a, it's a ooh, it's stretchy. A little bit stretchy. Well, this way it is. So maybe how do I want it to look? This is done. Okay, I'll sew one more of these and then I'll do, I'll try and do the, the pie. I mean the cupcake. Yeah, I actually had a, you can buy metal washers that are this big and that's what I would put on the bottom here as a weight. But they were like $2 each, which if you're sewing one for you, that's fine. But adding $2 to my pin cushion um, was a no-go. Because technically, you should be pricing things as if you're going to wholesale and then, re ooh, see, this is why you shouldn't do your against your pattern. You know, so if you think about it, if that weight cost me $2, right, <laughs> and then I figure out all the cost of everything, I'm like, okay, this pin cushion costs me $3.55. And and more than half of it is for the washer, which doesn't go to me. <laughs> um, it just goes to pay for it until you start doing the, okay, now I need to times it by 1.6 to get it to a, um, a wholesale cost. And then you're only making like whatever, you know, maybe $3 on your pin cushion. And then you double it for retail. That's when you're making money. But it, yeah, not for resale exactly, Lisa. But then if you sell it to a store, they make they make a huge markup compared to what you're making on it. So that's why I didn't do wholesale. Not because I'm against it, um, but because I couldn't afford it. Like the and the stores would say, well, you know, I can't I can't sell it for that or whatever. They didn't tell me this actually. I've just heard these arguments before, and I'm like, yeah, but the thing is. I have those expenses too, because I've seen stores say, oh, well, I have overhead and employees. And I'm like, yeah, so do I, <laughs> you know? So it's kind of like, yeah, and you get to make, say it's a $20 item, they get to make $10 on it when I only got to make $3.50 on it, you know? So it's interesting that that's their argument sometimes, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this, I mean, I could probably sell the pattern, but I don't know. I feel like it's 
it's time is done and I can just give it to you guys for free. It's a nice perk for the stream. You can subscribe subscribe to my stream instead and support me on Patreon. <laughs> How's that? Let's see. I, I use a lot of irons for weights. <laughs> They're so great. Yeah, so, yeah, you guys are the ones I'm, the reason I'm doing this, basically. It's fun. It's becoming a part of the stream. I was actually thinking, I need a little, like, it would be fun someday if we're big time to have emotes and one's a cherry pie. Wouldn't it be cute? Better yet, blueberry pie. Sorry if I'm off camera. I can't tell if I am, probably, yeah. Because this is awkward to cut. I'm cutting it very inaccurately. Now, right now, I feel like a Twitch streamer. <sighs> Just do what you want. I like that. Okay. I think I've got my pieces. Now I'm going to use the... Bias from the trees group. What was the iron on? Shut the blade. <laughs> oh, do you use the irons for camp? Why do you iron your clothes while you're camping? That's the question. Um, this is nine inches, so. So yeah, Carrie, this is what I'm thinking. Like, I'm gonna treat this piece of bias like a ribbon, you know? Oh, for your sewing. Yeah, she takes it, she, Rebecca um, has a hand crank sewing machine, you guys. She's Rebecca Shelley Art on Instagram. You can put your Instagram in there, in the chat, Rebecca, put your Instagram handle. And she takes her hand crank sewing machine and sews while she's camping. No electricity, you know? And um, so you use the iron. That's awesome. <laughs> We're all like, what do you use your iron for? You're all ironing. <laughs> Rebecca Shelley Art. I thought there was an underscore in there. So yeah, that's her Instagram. You can check it out. There's a lot of little videos of her. When's your show done, Rebecca? I was out of town, so I really want to see it. Taking a quilt class tomorrow. All right, you guys, you're right. Carrie's right, I have to sew like five more. Wait a minute, I have a little seam in my, how do I get the one seam in the binding? Here. It's fine, but you know, come on, I only need it for this, so I don't want a seam. I love this fabric. Do you saw the little details? There's bees and birds, and if you saw the actual fabric, it was really cool. Okay, so, um, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna curve this, this time, like this. Kind of badly, but you know. All right. Okay, you guys would actually sew this, right? September 29th. Okay, thank you. I figured it was through September. Cool. Um, you guys would really sew this, right? Like if I put the effort to put something together, because I I may not like make the instructions really, really detailed, but I would still make the pattern look nice. <laughs> so Alright, here we go. I I think I think when it's only one layer, it's a little easier to get that many ruffles in there. All right, so 
Um, I'm going to write down the new steps. Okay. 21. Oh my gosh, it's so bright, you guys. How can you see? What the heck? Why didn't you warn me? I turned the, I forgot I turned on the, the light. Your poor eyeballs. <laughs> I'm bright too, huh? Okay, cool. Okay, so, um, ruffle, ruffle to top crest. This is, this is literally how I design things. Oh, this is the disadvantage of doing this. I only have um, the fabric showing on one side. So we have this um, with... Oh, thanks for following. Who's that? It's for Danny. Danny Loco. <laughs> you guys can always tell me, hey, just the brightness. You know I'll do that. I care about your eyeballs. Okay, so let's see here. Get my gathers up there. I probably should tie my first gathers in kind of a knot so that I can pull on this in and they don't slide off. There we go. This. You know what my daughter's doing tonight? She's going to a drive-in movie. <laughs> Isn't that cute? I think I need to change my thread color, by the way. I know I do. Because, look, I think my thread's showing as to that. It's okay. It's okay. Just pull it out. Like that. All right. You know how I love removing the <laughs> the gathering thread. It's so satisfying. All right. Just getting rid of it because I didn't sew it very accurately, and you could see it. And this is my blueberry pie cushion. Finally, I'm getting justice and getting it back. I hope that person that took mine looks at it every time they use it and they're like. Yeah, I think she's going with a bunch of girlfriends, so they won't have room for pets. But that would be fun. I mean, I don't know. My dogs would probably bark at everybody that walked by, though, you know? This is our chance to add. Um, do we want to add any little, like high vent holes on the top right now yeah oh yeah well the last colors were just my prototype Megan I like I that yellow was growing on me though oh I have the tiny needle in I was like what's going on there um What I need is like a tone on tone, you know? Or maybe, oh yeah, wait, what about this? What about this color? Oh, that's about the same. Um, I need a light color. Could that work for little vents on the top? I could do the mustard, actually, that'd be cute.
Oh, I left that over there. Okay. I think I'm gonna go with this. Let's make a few. You know, little pipe vents. <laughs> right, Lisa? Can you imagine? Oh, something in blue like the juice coming out. Ooh. Well, you know, here's the thing, Carrie. One of the things I thought about doing a long time ago, you reminded me, is you could cut all, if you're using real wool felt, um, and this is wool fabric. This isn't wool felt, this one, but all the others have been. You could just cut holes in it and then top stitch fabric behind it. You know? We could do that. Should we try that? That seems kind of iffy, but you know me. YOLO. So let's see here. Let's see. Um, we'll put like one here and then one here. Where's my seam allowance? That was a little bigger than I thought. Okay, so let's do this one down here. Been a long time since I've done applique. Yeah, merino felt is good. <laughs> yeah, it, it, they feel a prick every time they use it. Look at that, like that carry, right? Wait, did I really draw on the right side? What the heck? I thought it was on the wrong side that whole time. wash it off later. I literally thought I was on the wrong side. Sorry for the noise, guys. Almost done. Okay. Oh, I forgot I changed my thread, so I have a little bit of thread vomit going on back there. Look at this long thread. It just kept going and going. There we go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now you could... There's so many ways to do something like this. You could, you know... Fuse it on here, you know. 
Yeah, pins will cover it up exactly. You're waiting for me to notice that. <laughs> you need to shout at me. You're on Twitch. I would have seen it almost immediately. <laughs> what do you think, Carrie? I got my blue on there. Like the blueberry, blueberry juice, right? Okay, so we have this. And then we sew this. Okay, so... Top to bottom. Okay, and then um, vestige top to bottom. I know. You know, Megan, actually, I think in Twitch you can do that. You can send, um, I don't know how to do it, though. I was just in a chat when it happened once, and I was like, what was that? <laughs> it wasn't appropriate, by the way. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was funny, but it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> Just because of what it was and when it happened. I'm gonna re-sew this little ruffle here with the purple thread just so that um, when the stress of the stuffing is in there, pulling it apart, we don't see my white stitching there, you know? All right, so let's um, sew this here, right? So I'm gonna sew a little bit like that. here it's good to like get into that the the ruffle so that you don't have to deal with that you know kid I've been in a twitch chat where someone could send they sent a voice thing so can't believe I did that <laughs> I don't know how they did it. I just was there when it happened, and I was kind of shocked because I, it kind of startled me because I get it was a different sound, different voice, all of it. They actually sent a, uh, a, a, I don't know what they did. Okay. Now I do the. Um, Filling, right? Filling to both crests. You gotta love a pattern piece where all the names are food. Um, I think that maybe, no, it was actually a link to sound. They sent a link to the, uh, like sounds I'm not going to say what it was <laughs> was pretty bad I did not endorse it the kid deserved it <laughs> I didn't endorse it it wasn't anything violent or anything like that yeah yeah it was, uh, it was just like I was new to the whole streaming like like watching streams so I was still learning it could be a feature that's just been disabled kids it's been a couple years all right so um I started up here right maybe I'll open these up and see if this makes a difference let's just try it right so I take this perpendicular and um, I line up this edge with my that seam allowance edge and I yeah I don't want the Mobius again so I think this is the trick you have to do this pull that over like this see there I go again saying using the word this or that for everything bye Terry 
Oh, yay. I can't wait. I can't wait to see those. That's so cool. All right. Here we go. This is the wrong one. This is the wrong one. I was like, that's not enough room. All right. What time is it? Oh, my gosh. It's almost... It's almost two? All right. I don't think I'll do a cupcake after this. But I will, I will some other time. I'm gonna try and figure things out with you guys more often. You're good for my mental juices, <laughs> you know? All right, so. This needs to go to this one with the back piece here. That's what I did wrong just now. And I need to make sure I'm getting my blueberries right side up. So this. It goes like this, like this, like this. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna combat the Mobius by going like this. I think. Pretty sure that's what it is that I need to do. All right. Let me go again. That's a little shallow. It was like my stitch was in the wrong, uh, wrong length. Sorry, my machine slams down. So I have a, just for anybody who's new and doesn't know this, um, I have a heel lift machine. So. Ooh, right kits? Exactly. You know what? Maybe that's what it was. It was Discord. That's, you probably, that's what it is. I'll bet that's what it was. I bet the kid had Discord. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so, what was I just saying? Like this, yeah. Okay. All right. This is going good. You know? <laughs> oh, but look, every time I get to this side, I'm a little short. You know? That triangle is so on the bias there. It's a little bit hard to get it all. See that? I'm really short. So I actually think I'm going to pull it out to right here, just past this point, because my point lined up with the center. I'm okay there. I'm definitely one of those people that processes things verbally. Um, because sometimes I'll be like, oh, I need your opinion on something to someone, and I'll literally, all that's all I'll say, and then it'll, the answer will pop in my head. I'm like, oh, I never mind. I just needed to, like, start the conversation, so. <laughs> yeah. Plus, love the point. Ah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Carrie. I think I'm trying not to pull at all. But my center did line up with the center of the pie right there. So I know I was okay when I came down. It could be my feed dogs too. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you guys is my machine. So I have a heel lift machine. So my heel lifts up the presser foot. Can you see it right here? Um, but if I leave it up and I'm not telling it what to do, it comes down on its own. All right, so here, this is where I'm going to, so I know I want this to go to here like this, and I want it to pivot here, right? So I need this to go all the way to there. Yeah, so I definitely need to, like, pay attention to this getting a little stretched out. It just wants to relax, you know? As soon as it's got cut, the fabric's like, ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. Even if you guys just made yourself one, I'm happy with that. Knowing that we're all sewing with a pie pin cushion would be kind of fun, you know? 
Okay, that did the trick. That was really easy to fix. Okay. Pivot. All right, so here's my center, which I want to about right here. You can see my quarter inch comes down to here, and that quarter inch is right there. So right there, that's what I want. And then I cut this, pivot, Dang, I really wish I would have figured this out years ago. This is so much easier and faster. I still hated stuffing things, but you know, that's no big deal. I could do that in front of the TV. Okay. Blueberries. Blueberries are so perfect. Yeah. Oh yeah. I almost did some prototypes in the canvas because I have some in this color. And I was like, oh, I have this felt. This will, this is not felt, but it's wool. I just made a vest out of this wool. I got this wool, I'm pretty sure, when I was on a trip somewhere. And I, I wish I remembered the story on it, you know? Okay, so this is the bottom and this is... This is the bottom and this is the top. No one can stop me, I'm all the way up. All right, like this, right? Like that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Taking my time. Still seeing if opening the seams right here will actually help. It sh shouldn't change anything, but I'm wondering if it'll give a easier way to start and stop. So the overhang first, and then sew the blueberry filling. Did that? Isn't that what I'm doing? Oh, you mean like top stitch it, like do this and stitch all this, and then attach it. It would be really hard to get in there if that's what you mean. It's already pretty like, you know, this is about the limits of what you want to fuss with. You know, this is actually really easy now. It probably looks like a hot mess and confusing, but if you don't think too much about it, it helps. Bye, Megan. I'll see you Wednesday. I don't know what I'm making yet. Sorry. I'll entice you back somehow. <laughs> don't want to catch the point of the other one in there. All right. Okay, pivot right here. This fabric isn't as nice as the wool felt because it is getting a little unraveled, but that's okay. We're not handling it for very long and it'll be fine once I'm done. Okay, so here's my point. Look at those, those are so cute. Except for the ink. <laughs> Sewing the filling to the overhang first. Um, it doesn't matter now, now that it's easier. Doing the, the, if I sew it this way, sewing the filling to the little overhang piece or this piece, it doesn't matter which one I do first anymore, it's, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay, Megan, we'll see you later. All right, so let's clip our points here. 
Um, I don't feel like I'm a master at doing little points. Like I know enough about points and I've been trying to turn sharp points for decades now. Um, I've learned enough to know like something like this, what I'm trying to do is shave off some of this bulk because I'm asking all of this to be in here in this point, right? So I could actually do a better job. I could do this, but the more I hoik on it when I'm trying to turn it, the more likely I will pull out some of the um, wool through the stitching line. So I could reinforce it, you know, that's not a bad idea. All right, so let's turn it all. I might get my chopstick this time. It might be a little easier to turn the point and then um, I don't have to worry about pulling it through. Let's just see. Wool felt a little more stable. I mean, it's a novelty item, right? It's not a collar point. This wool is not felted. It's pretty open weave. Okay. Let's just poke all this in with our finger. Okay. Oh, I have a blueberry pie pink cushion again. I'm so excited. All right. So what did I, I started in the middle right there last time, right? So let's just start straight up on the back, you know? Let's tuck this in here. Tuck in this there. This is pretty thick right there. I'm gonna start on this little leg back here. That makes so much more sense to start right there. A lot easier to get going and um, I don't have the hump um, giving me resistance on the back of my back of my uh, presser foot. Meaning like, you know, sometimes when you put something in there, whatever's behind doesn't let you put the presser foot down because the presser foot's longer than you realize sometimes. So, hi Sandy, how's it going? Hi Nancy, ooh, Oktoberfest. Nancy, we, we figured it out. I'm so happy. So I'm finally getting my blueberry pie pin cushion back because mine was taken <laughs> a long time ago. I had an open studio thing event that I had at my house. All right. Doing the top stitch of the crust. When do you get to say that, you know? Stitching in the ditch too. I'll definitely use wool felt next time. A good place to get things like wool felt, like really good wool felt, wool felt is Montessori and Waldorf um, supply places. That's where I had the best luck. But you know, if you have a sweater that accidentally succumbed to the laundry and got felted, you could use that if it was dense enough. <laughs> Do some upcycling. I'm just focusing on keeping this edge right here, the seam on the edge and less about everything else. I'm trying not to think about how weird it is to do what I'm doing here. It's not hard at all, thankfully. It's just not kind of sewing we do all the time, you know? <laughs> If anything, I'll put the seam towards the underside. Okay. Again, that, this, these stitches are uh, 
very visible on the other side, so I'm kind of cognizant of where they are. They may not be lined up with the filling perfectly. I still got my ruffle all the way in there. So I'm gonna have to like pick up and stop again. It's kind of a bummer. I'm almost done too. Look, there's my stop. Flip the ruffle. That, you know, actually um, opening my seam allowances actually did help the bulk feel less like a hump. It was more smooth. It's more smooth of a transition. All right. <laughs> not bad. This fabric's not ideal. But. Yay. I've never done one like this either, which is fun. Or the bias, single layer bias. <laughs> happy. Uh. <laughs> cupcake, cupcake. <laughs> yeah, I, lizard gravel, really? Interesting. See, my thing with, I used um, pebble gravel for a weight in my cupcake here. Kind of hear it. But I put it at the bottom because I didn't want to poke it with my pins. <laughs> you know, that would have dulled them. So see, I got this ruffle all the way to the edge. It actually looks better that way. But sewing it, you have to pick up your, you have to stop. And then start again on the other side of the ruffle. Whereas this one, I went straight through. So my ruffle's not sewn on straight. I mean, you could, you could kind of maybe do a couple stitches here and put that there and it's all good, right? And then um, fill it with stuffing here, which I need to find. And then um, it's good. Let's see, is my point right on top? Might be a little cockeyed, I can't tell. No, it's actually pretty good. Considering this this felt is really thin. Yeah, playground gravel. Good night, Mata. We're done here. You're good. Yeah, that was Carrie's idea. She's like, you need some blue up there. We were gonna stitch them on. And then I was like, wait, I remember thinking I could put holes. Yeah, you guys. I, we figured it out. Filling to both crests. What's my next step? Six crests, two crests. <laughs> um, ruffle to crest, back off from ends about three quarters of an inch. Crest to crest, stuff and close. Oh, six A, top stitch. Crest. That's important. Hi, Joe Shell. How's it going? Oh, right. Walnut shells. You know what? You're reminding me. I do have some of those. I bought a little snail pie cushion, pin cushion kit. That's why I wanted a snail. That's right. Yeah. Reptile sand, which is finely ground. Walnut shells. Interesting. Oh, I'm glad, you guys. Yeah, I'm happy. It's back. I'll work on the cupcake too. The cupcake's ready to go. I just need to sew it. This one's so old and faded. <laughs> Yay. This one looks crisper, doesn't it? But it's not stuffed yet. You can put fabric scraps in there. Um, old wool. You'd have to really, you have to pack it tightly. That I just remember that. I almost want to steal the stuffing from this one. I don't think I have stuffing anywhere. Oh, smart, Carrie. Yeah, people with nut allergies might not appreciate that, huh? Then stitch in the ditch, start at ruffles. You know, yeah. I think that would be the thing to do, Ray, because if your ruffle got, gets all the way to the edge, you'd have to start and stop there. But it's hard to start right there because this is a little thick right here to put under your presser foot behind your stitching. So um, I started right here. 
I had to pick up on this one, but not that one. I think it looks cuter like this, but this doesn't bug me. If I didn't, if I didn't see this, I would be fine with this right here, you know? Um, and then this was only a piece of bias that I used for the ruffle, whereas like this is two layers, you know? And you, you can even like do the two layers and, you know, pull it down like that, so. Yay, cool guys, that was fun. It was fun to hang out with you guys and so, I'm gonna get some stuffing. I have a new pen, cushion. Not that I use pens much, but I like them. <laughs> Let's put the cute ones on, right? The button, the leaf. <laughs> yeah, those are, I think that we, buckwheat shells are kind of light. Oh, see Joe Shell, that's what I was wondering about the um, steel wool. You know, but then someone said they think that it could be a urban legend that it'll work to sharpen your pens and pen, pens and pencils, pens and uh, needles. So, yeah, I'm gonna maybe I'll put all my scraps in the garbage in there to stuff it. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, that was fun. I didn't plan anything for today. I didn't even open that bin. I just was like, there's the pattern. We're all going to do it together. That was pretty productive, in my opinion. So um, I'll try and work on making this a, a pattern. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking, Joshelle. I like the heaviness. It does have a little more weight. I mean, it is metal. Well, that's cute. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, you guys. Cool. Well, um... I haven't decided what I'm making. I gotta decide in like a day. Shoot. Maybe I'll do one of the serger things. Um, the Lucerne blouse by Hey June Handmade is kind of on my radar. So, thanks Lisa, me too. I'm glad I did it too. It was It's fun to have like a chill one. We should do these more often. Maybe I could do a pattern drafting one next week. Let me think about it. I got some new fabrics now. But, you know, fall is coming, so I want some fall things, too, so. Cool. All right, guys. Well, have a great weekend. Um, you'll see me on Wednesday. We're going to cut something together. I don't know what it is yet. I will post the schedule on Tuesday, maybe Monday. I'm trying to take Mondays off. And by off, I mean I clean my house. So. Oh, I didn't put my label in there. I could put it right here, I guess, but that would be kind of weird. That's kind of weird anyway. <laughs> All right. I know, Nancy. I know. We could probably do that some sometime. My husband went out of the country, and I'm kind of the parent right now, and I kind of want to hang out with my daughter a little bit. And I was gone last weekend, so. But if you guys are down for that, and if I hear some good feedback about, like, you guys just want to hang out and sew more like this, I'd be down for that. I love troubleshooting stuff. And I have a few things I want to troubleshoot, so. All right, well, have a great weekend, you guys. Let me know what you're working on. And um, if you like what you see and you're new here, subscribe. And if you click the little bell on YouTube, it'll tell you when I'm live. But I'm live Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm in California. Um, and I am on Patreon if you want to support me. Thanks to all of you who already do. I really appreciate it. Um, you can also make a donation, I think, through Streamlabs one time, one and done. I did get some sort of congratulatory email from YouTube saying I can monetize my stream now, but I'm not getting my hopes up because I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> so I don't want to change much. I'm just enjoying this. This is really fun. So it's really great to sew with you guys. So, yeah, I do Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Jan. I cut on Wednesday. I sew part one on Thursday, part two Saturday. But this week, we didn't need a part two. The Kilo wrap dress went so quickly. So if you guys wanted to see that today, I'm really sorry. We did it all on Thursday, and it's uploaded right now. And all the descriptions to that product will be there probably by tomorrow. So on the website, so, so live. So 
Thanks, you guys. Hasta la semana. Hasta la próxima semana. <laughs> I'll see you guys. See, all my automatic things are coming up. Sorry. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Thanks for my blueberry pie. Now I want pie.